right to left. Came off deep in Wolfpack territory. Kick goes into the end zone, taken out by Adrian Dugan, and he's dropped at the 10 yard line. Devon Banks, number 19, with a big time tackle. And Nevada will go on offense for the first time, starting from the 10 yard line. David Neal leading this prolific offense that has had the, a quarterback throw for at least 2,000 yards in each of the last 15 seasons. And this guy's managed 4,100 yards passing in just 12 games. Neal to Chris Lemon. Banged after a game of about two, maybe one. Bulldogs gang tackling. Orlando Huff, number 49, and would stop. Big play by the Bulldog defense right out of the gate. And that was Lemon. You expect even a passing team, heavily passing team, as the Wolfpack are, are going to try to establish the run right off the bat. Today's starting lineup brought to you by Perko's Cafe. We'll get to that after this play. On a second down and nine for the Wolfpack. Neal will throw quickly, nearly intercepted by Terrell Grayson. If he'd been able to hold on to that, that was an easy six for Fresno State, but he skied to knock it down. Well, good aggressive play up front by the Bulldogs. We talked about that at the top of the show. And uh, something you're going to have to do, not just once or twice, but uh, all day today. The talented quarterback out there. Yeah, Setting up a third down down play, play, third and uh, third and nine. Actually, sh uh, short nine, a long eight. Three receivers in. Neal. Looking. Off target. Pass was intended for Burr, short of the mark in the turf. So on three downs, Fresno State's defense holds, and Nevada will have to punt as we take a look at the starting lineups running through it defensively for Fresno State. Orlando Huff getting the start at one of the linebacker positions. Peyton Williams nursing a little hamstring. They'll keep an eye on him. Williams starting at corner. Here comes Fresno State. Fair kid all four by Williams. The Bulldogs put the big rush on, nearly got it. And Fresno State will have terrific field position to start its first offensive drive at the 40-yard line. And a really good defensive sequence to get out of playing basically straight-up defense. Kevin Cole plans on using, uh, dropping those safeties down in to uh, what he calls his rob position to rob some of their tendencies. And uh, But they were able not to uh, have to show that, which would bode well down the line. Derek Ward is in the ball game at tailback, and let's see if the Bulldogs might just find out how his health is early. They do. Behind the block of Blackwell, cuts it back and picks up about four yards. They look good on that one, Ralph. And both Ward and Blackwell come out of the game. So I'm either going to ask Derek Ward how he felt. As we take a look at the dog starting lineup on offense, you see the changes. Two newcomers actually... <laughs> Guys who were in the starting line at one time and are now back because of the injury. Rodney Wright, number 17, is a guy we'll have to keep an eye on because he was hobbled. Swing pass comes out to Charles Smith. And a penalty flag comes in as Smith was run out of bounds at about the 33. He's now making the 31 yard line. We'll check the flag. A good rhythm pass by Billy. He's signaling holding. It is going to be holding. Let's take a look at the starting lineups. Rockwell, good uh, senior starter in the middle. Matt Carminer coming off a three-game suspension, so this will be his first game of the year. And Fresno State's coaches thought that uh, with Carminer, Carminer, Carminer coming back into the uh, starting lineup, that he was going to change the way that they played defense. They may not have been able to do things defensively the way they, want, the way they wanted to the first three games, oh, they, but with Carminer back in, they Ten might be able to do some stuff. The foul, repeat the down. Of course, uh, Nobody could do anything last week in the 72-10 loss at Oregon. Holding crawl against Fresno State takes it back. Well, outside the original line scrimmage, so from the 43, it's second down. Closes inside 40 to about the 40 the there. 
Well, these are some of these mic nicked up bulldogs that we heard about. Uh, but from the looks of Ward and Ack, if their bodies aren't ready, their their minds and their hearts sure are today because Ack looked really good on that one. Jeff Tisdell, the head coach here at Nevada, former quarterback himself in the late 1970s. And then head coach Chris Alt, who's now the athletic director. Third down, Fresno State, third and nine. Charles Smith in motion. Bola. Over the middle. Right right, right the first down, inside the 25. Stops at about the 24. Maxell Williams, number six, on the tackle, but it's a first down for the Bulldogs. And I think the Bulldogs feel, I know Andy Ludwig feels, that they can do this. They can drop straight back. There you see a five-step drop. Plants rhythm, crossing pattern, pattern to right. Hits him on the run. And good rack yardage. Run after catch. I'll tell you, the way that Rodney Wright was limping around in pregame, kind of, uh, it's a good sign to see him up and, up and going like that. It's amazing what adrenaline will do for you. Yeah. Well, we saw him during warm-ups, and we thought, boy, that does not look good. Right in motion. Takes it on the sweep, gets it on the short hop, reverses his field, and then slips. Be a loss of about seven. But a real mm -hmm. smart play. Mm -hmm. You know, he saw, he saw there was nothing there. Tried to reverse his field. Here you see the handoff. Looks like it was a good handoff there. Rodney just didn't open up for it. Sees there's nothing there and goes down. Smart play. Down here, you don't want to make mistakes. You're getting close to the red zone. You want to come out of this drive with some points. Smart heads up play. It may be hard for the players to reverse their field here today. This whole Not surface even. has been uh, resodded because the turf was just in awful condition for the opener against the Oregon State several weeks ago. Bullock is it inside the Paris game. Going the outside, inside the 30. Charles Rogers on a collision inside the 20 yard line. And Rodney Wright, I tell you, what guts this kid have. We've seen him take just some tremendous hits throughout his career. I hope we can see the block he makes for Paris here. Good job by Paris to slip mm -hmm. outside using his speed. Now, I don't know if you'll see it, but no, you don't. But we see Rodney getting up right there. One of the Wolfpack giving him a hit on the uh, shoulder pads, like, good job. The great block by a banged up Bulldog. Third down and six for Fresno State. Bullock will throw. Swings it out to Paris Gaines. Nice catch. He has the first down and maybe more. Knocked out of bounds at about the five yard line. And another poised play by Billy Bullock. Uh, uh, I tell you, when he hits his stride and this offense starts clicking, it could be scary. Here you see him looking off the defense, looks downfield, now swings it out here to Paris, hits him in stride. Now here you see some tough running. Here's a fellow smelling the end zone. He's not going to go out of bounds until he's knocked out. So the Bulldogs' opening possession has been impressive. They've had to overcome a holding penalty, but they're now to the five-yard line of the Wolfpack. First and goal, game sweeping to the near side. Nevada has the numbers, penalty flag. Looks like holding. Gaines has dropped for a loss of three. A lot of times when uh, something like this uh, breaks down, you will get a holding penalty, and that's what it is. That'll be the second holding penalty of this series for the Bulldogs. There you see the holding right there. Tight end. Branstetter holding. Can't argue with that call. You've got to keep those hands in. You can't grab them on the shoulder pads. Like on the offense, the play ended behind the line of scrimmage. The penalty will be enforced from the previous spot. So they'll mark it off from the original line, which was the five. Penalty takes it out to the 15. It'll be first and goal from there. Scoreless. 11 minutes left in the first quarter. Bulldogs have been having a lot of success with this unbalanced line look and putting a player in motion. Throws the pass is complete. Vince Branstetter picks up about five. No spot at the 10-yard line. He's second down there. And expect the Wolfpack uh, to play a lot of man-press defense. 
They've yeah. seen the Oregon State film, and UCLA last week had some success with it. And Andy Ludwig uh, doesn't expect the Wolfpack uh, to abandon that defense since it's one that they had used already. So it's a very effective defense for them in the past. Derek Ward back in at the tailback of Fresno State. Seven goals in the 10. Ward the ball to the flag comes in again. Ward picks up about five more down to the five, and we'll check this penalty. Well, it's another unbalanced line with the tight end in motion to give an extra blocker on that right side. We might have an illegal formation here. For Fresno State, I believe that's now the fourth penalty of this drive. Bulldogs are still in position to score. It'll be second down. The penalty will take it back to the 10. Illegal motion and moving forward at the snap. Five yards. Repeat second down. Well, not an illegal formation, but an illegal motion. When you do a lot of these things that are unconventional, so to speak, you have to be very disciplined and hold your water, especially if you're a motion man. The third penalty for Fresno State on this drive. Ball to 15, second and goal. Rodney Wright, the ball carrier, has some blockers, gets around the corner, banged out of bounds at about the two yard line. Well, another Rodney unbalanced Rodney. line, and this is like just a speed sweep, <laughs> for lack of a better term, to a. Uh, and what we thought was injured, Rodney Wright. But uh, here you see Rodney, the motion man, they handed to him. This is just a speed play. The uh, tight end hooking the outside. There you see Act Moses with a nice block. Great block by Moses. Turns it up. Almost makes it in. Carmina finally knocked him out of bounds. Third and goal. Ball at the two yard line. Rest no stick. Trying to open the scoring in this one. Eric Ward, stop Fresno State. Ward with his second career touchdown. And the Bulldogs overcome three penalties on an impressive opening drive to take a 6 nothing lead. Well, this package of unbalanced line, motion men, handing off for the fullback, handing off to the tailback, handing off to the flanker in motion, is really given the Wolfpack fit so far. They don't have an answer for it so far. Jeff Hanna on to attempt the extra point. For Fresno State, make it a seven nothing lead. And on to the point after Bolick the hold. Bolick is the holder. Kick is up and good, so it's a nine play, 40 yard drive for Fresno State. And the Bulldogs take the early lead here in Reno. It's Fresno State seven. Nevada nothing on the touchdown run by Derek Ward. This year it's going to be big time football, so get the real gear here at the Bulldog Shop. Get ready for the game with everything that's red wave incredible and big time football fun. Authentic Fresno State clothing by Russell, Antigua, and Champion. The Bulldog Shop has big time clothing for men, women, and kids. All in the latest Fresno State styles and designs for any time of the year. Make it a big time football season and get the real gear here at the Bulldog Shop. The Bulldog Shop, Cedar and Barstow, across from all three stadiums. Yeah, yeah. EJ, 170 million. That's a record. Think it's going to change you? Absolutely not. EJ Tucker's never been about money. EJ Tucker's never played for money, and money will not change EJ Tucker, not one iota. Say, is that a Bud Light? Oh, yeah, it's last one. Oh, yeah? What do you say I give you $1 million for? With a great taste that won't fill you up and never let you down, make it a Bud Light. What do you want for that watch? Summertime, and the living is easy at the Bulldog Brewing Company. First, kick back. Return home next Saturday. Come experience the homecoming festivities and the highly acclaimed WAC showdown against TCU. The Friday night pep rally and dinner at the old softball field on campus begin at 5.30 p.m. The annual homecoming parade Saturday morning starts at 10. Don't miss the fun. Only six days away. Kick it off for Fresno State. Bulldogs leading 7 0 with an impressive offensive drive. Adrian 
Tigers with the seven. Drives to reverse his field, but again, boy, the kick cover teams for Fresno State since the effort against Portland State really. Well, that's got to make Coach John Baxter happy. I mean, uh, this has been one of the strong suits of this Bulldog team, the special teams, in particular the uh, kickoff coverage for uh, two two plus seasons here, and uh, that's twice now inside the twenty that uh, they've been able to stop the Wolfpack. Nevada comes out with three receivers, just one back behind. The who will throw, and it's a pressure. Steps up away from the pressure, intended for number 15, Mo Jones. No catch, no play. Well, they caught him. Or is there a flag? Yes, yes there is a flag. It's stuck, stuck right in there in the end. It was caught him in some man defense, and Neil just had way too much time to throw the football. I'm not sure. Steps up in the pocket nicely. Yeah, they are going to call pass interference against Fresno State. Good looking young quarterback, this David Neal. You see a lot of quarterbacks when they feel pressure want to escape to the outside. There's nothing there because that's where the tackles are pushing the defensive ends. And they usually wind up with a loss. He pre felt the pressure a little bit, stepped up in the middle, and something good came out of him. He's also an excellent runner. It'll be a 15-yard penalty on the pass interference. Defense, 15-yard penalty, first down. So the ball is spotted out at the 32-yard line. They threw that flag. They have a, uh, an N in the middle of the field with a wolf logo. <laughs> and he almost got it right in the yellow eyes of the wolf. Well, movement across the uh, line. Mm -hmm. I think that may be five more against the Bulldogs, unless someone from Nevada pulls Fresno State across. No, it's another five against the Bulldogs. Yeah, dead ball, encroachment, with contact, on the defense, five-yard penalty. Tabidi Lockhart, number 99, was one of those I think we came across, but you can pick you can pick any of the three across the front. So a first and five for Nevada. The Wolfpack went three and out on the first offensive possession. This is Lemon swallowed up and dropped him. But perhaps a one-yard loss by Alan Harper. Number 98 just wrapped him and dropped him. And that's not easy to do with this tough, tough running back, Chris Lemon. Well, Kevin Coyle thinks Chris Lemon, although not the most uh, prolific runner that they've faced here, believes he is the best combination back, runner, blocker, receiver that they have ever seen for you. A loss of a yard. Yeah, he slips and then he's dropped. So he really got into trouble there and he slipped. Nearly went down there before Giacchino Tiramani got him around, around the legs and dropped him at the 25. But Ralph, there was nothing there even if he would have kept his footing. They played a man coverage with a free safety. Kevin Cole now is starting to throw a lot of different looks at David Neal uh, to try to confuse him. There was just nothing there, even if he would have been able to throw the ball. Fifth sack of the year for the Bulldog defense, the first this season for Chiramati. Neal to throw, again, getting pressure over the middle. The pass is complete, but it will be short of the first down. Trevor Inslee, the receiver, so he now has 45 catches this season to lead the country. Well, so far, our keys to the game, the Bulldogs have been able to execute. Put pressure on Neal on almost every single play, giving him nothing easy. Williams back to receive the punt, but he won't get it off. It was blocked by Fresno State. Derek Ward with the block. Touchdown. Bulldogs, Rodney Wright picks it up and carries it in. The second block punt of the season for Derek Ward. Well, it was not a matter of if it was going to get blocked. It was by who. The Bulldogs just came through there like a sieve on the punter. You'll see white jerseys fly in here any second. Boom, right there. Two more to follow. And it's like, who wants to pick it up and score? And Rodney Wright says, I'll do that. That's the second ball. Rodney Wright has taken on a hop today. Remember on the end around, he had to field one on a bounce after dropping it. And he did. It's a touchdown. Wright gets the score. Ward the block. Hannah on for the extra point to make it 14 nothing Fresno State. And we're not even midway through the first quarter. Kick is up. Kick is good. 
And right now, so are the Bulldogs. 7.49 left in the first quarter. And it's been all Fresno State. Bulldogs lead the Wolfpack 14 and other special teams with the latest touchdown. It was Brown and uh, Peyton Williams. No flying. Mike Phillips on the punt for Nevada. Charles Smith is now back to field it. Justin Johnson nearly got that one. Bulldogs already have one block going for a touchdown. Smith dropped the 21 yard line. Ball jolly on the stop. It's like a flag now. There is a flag at about the 23-yard line. We see him bobble the ball, picks it up, tries to make something out of it. Wolfpack all over it. And I think the Bulldogs are going to get a penalty tacked. Whoop. On the return, we have a illegal push to the back. Ten yards from the end of the run, first down. So the penalty takes it back to the ten-yard line, and that's where Fresno State will take over on offense. The Bulldogs leading 14 and up, and let's see if we can pick it up. Yeah, they're pushing the back. Shoving the back. Shoving the back. Uh, now this situation here, you can expect to see the Wolf Pack, you can see the players including their fans, to try something really aggressive to force a turnover down here. Well, the fans down in that end zone are on their feet. They need something to happen now. They're down 14 to nothing. A turnover here would be just what the doctor ordered for the Wolfpack. So James Tillman into the game for Fresno State with his first carry of the day. Picks up about four. That's one of those backs, Ralph, that uh, you don't hear a lot about. You've heard about Paris Gaines and Ward and... Uh, but uh, Tillman is really a, uh, a tough-nosed, hard-practicing uh, fullback that uh, Coach Hill just thinks the world of. We could also see some of Josh Levi in the game. That was all depending on the health of Derek Ward, and so far, Ward looks good. He's scored a touchdown and blocked the punt. He's in there at tailback right now. On second down, Ward with the football. And will not be taken down, and this could go. Look the speed. It's a foot race to the end zone. Come from behind. No, he keeps his feet. Touchdown. Fresno State on a huge run by Derek Ward. Charles Rogers was the only guy who could get him, and it looked like he was going to trip him up, but the guy is just too, too strong to oh, take did. down. Look at the Bulldog fans. They're loving it. Well, this is just... This is just good individual effort. There's nothing there. He bounces off. Now north and south, young man. There's where the goal is. And that's a straight path to pay dirt right there. And I tell you, we talked about it last week, Ralph. He just keeps showing more and more signs of a really special, special running back. 86 yards on the touchdown run. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. the second touchdown of the game mm -hmm. as flags come in. And I'm beginning mm -hmm. to think this stuff that uh, Coach Hill <laughs> to tell us about it. We're getting necked. I think I'm we got suckered I'm into the old. Uh, <laughs> we were thinking along the same lines because I was going to repeat uh, what we had been told that the Derek Ward hardly practiced this week. And then they were a little worried about whether he was going to be able to, to go today. Well, I think Coach Hill was being very forthright with us. And I think he's as, uh, well, He's, he's a lot more happy than we are. We're very happy to see uh, Eric Ward uh, playing like this today. Two touchdowns and a blocked punt with Eric Ward already. Another, and the extra point is missed by Jeff Hanson. So they're going to stay out on the field and sort it out. Now they got procedures. Not enough men in the line of scrimmage. Five-yard penalty. Recap. More than one, I guess. That's the first time I've heard of legal procedures. Well, he said re-kick, and I don't <laughs> think the you know, procedures. And he said it's going to be a re-kick, and I don't think the Wolfpack are going to. No, it is declined, and they'll take a timeout. 
coaching staff over at the Nevada sat sideline just stunned. 72 10 losers last week. Now behind 20 to nothing at the Fresno State with five minutes left in the first quarter. We'll be back. Getting Sunday at 9 on your station, KMPH, Fox 26. This time, the kickoff taken by Johnny Holmes, and he gets a little more, uh, a little better outcome than Dugas had on his previous kick returns out across the 20 yard line to the 24. Fresno State, the uh, the lightning scoring drive took the Bulldogs only 57 seconds to go 89 yards on two plays. Of course, the big play, the 86-yard run by Derek Ward. And what you don't want to do now if you're the Bulldogs is let up one iota. This is a ball club that probably we're trying to find the stats right now, but you know, averaged close to 40 points per game last year. So in all reality, we're looking at uh, one more points to win this ball game. So this ball game is far from over, especially when you have a guy like Neal back there. You don't want to give up any cheap scores here and keep the door slammed shut. London, the ball carrier, picking up five. It'll be a second and five for Fresno State. Neal, six passing for 21 yards. Last week uh, against Oregon, he was knocked out of that game with a concussion. So he may not have to may not be uh, that comfortable even today. Intended along the sideline for Inslee, incomplete. Dante Marsh over there defending for Bulldogs. Well, you can see now the Wolfpack missing their really talented tight end who was uh, injured last week in a, just a devastating hit and has chosen to actually retire from, from football. But... Uh, you really miss a guy like that. And you really focus even more on things. On third down, again, nothing doing for Nevada. Fresno State's defense is, is I'll tell you, they're, uh, they're about as up as we've seen them in a game this year. Very animated, making big plays. And the Bulldogs have forced another punt. But here you see Neil dropping back, handing off on a draw play to Lemon. Nothing doing there. The Bulldogs smell it out. And a big, you know, a really a big series for the Bulldogs. They've never had a lead like this. A uh, young team, you don't even know if they can handle a lead like this. So to come out defensively and slam the door shut right after score, good news. Phillips gets the kick off, and I'll tell you, Fresno State is coming after every punt. Charles Smith lets it roll and takes a great Nevada roll. Picking up about an extra 12 yards down to the 20-yard line. And it'll be dead there. So far, 31 yards in total offense for Nevada in this game. 151 for the Bulldogs. Look at the numbers. Well, total domination so far for the Fresno State Bulldogs. Uh, 151 to 31. I don't expect those stats to stay that in that uh, extreme of a disparity because uh, this offense uh, for the Wolfpack will start moving the ball. But the Bulldogs already have a 20 to nothing lead. 319 remaining. First down, James Tillman, the lone running back behind Bolek. Turns the ball carry across the 20 to about the 22. Drop there by number 48, Josh Smith, junior linebacker. Billy Bolek so far has really shown the poise and leadership and confidence. Mm -hmm. uh, like I said, I had a good feeling about Billy coming into this ball game. I mean, he's unaffected by the criticism uh, and really believes that he can win with this team and win big. Second down. And again, what you want to do is the bull, for the Bulldogs here, what you your game plan should be, and I'm sure it is, to really have the ball security there. You don't want to give a turnover down here. Play good, solid football. Keep doing what you're doing. Don't give them anything cheap. Hunt if you have to. Stay aggressive. That last completion was to Marque Davis, number eight. He's a freshman at the Fresno State is expecting great things from him. Fresno 
pressured, unloads it. It was intended for Branstetter, but the, then again, I think Bullock was throwing it really where no one could get it. And it is incomplete. Bulldogs will have to punt. Joel Comfort comes on for the first time in the game. Okay. Pressure on, uh, on Bullock. Dangerously close to, if you throw this away, you have to really throw it away. There you see him in trouble. It's hard throw to throw across your body. And... Um, if you throw it away, it'd be best to throw it to the left there. You don't want to give him anything cheap now. Comfort to punt. Trevor Inslee back deep. High snap. Comfort gets it off. Short kick. Takes a group. Fresno State out. Inside the 40 to about the 38 yard line at the stop there. And that's where Nevada will go on offense again. The Wolf back. Only 31 yards of offense so far. No points. 37 yard punt. And Nevada's coaching staff probably struggling to figure out what's going on. This has been such a prolific offense over the years and, and really has not shown that this season. Quarterback is a good one, but he's just a sophomore. There's a mix-up in back. With Neil on the handoff, he's dropped for a loss of about five. Well, Neil audible. Uh, Kevin Coyle gave him a strong safety force look, but then creeped back into a double zone, meaning two safety deep with the two corners forcing, and he audible to a run, hoping to split it up in there, but the Bulldogs were slanting that way. And then you have a run in, quarterback, uh, nothing good comes out of that. And Alan Harper just beat his blocker, was, was in the backfield, and could have gotten the handoff as easily as Lemon. Justin Johnson gets back. There's a fumble. The ball is still loose. And Neal gets it back. That was a juggling act by Neal because the ball came out once, maybe twice. And he recovered Nevada's offense just moving backwards. We said they had 31 yards of offense. Then went to 26 with the loss of five. And now they lose a couple more. Well, Neal was audibling there. And... <laughs> Well, the young man had a concussion last week. They say he's ready to go, but haven't had a concussion. You're not full 100% ready to go in one week. I can tell you that. And Fresno State is going all it can to put the pressure on. Zone blitz by the Bulldog. Neal running out of trouble. He can do this, but he's not going to be able to pick up the first down. Shoved out of bounds at the 35-yard line. Call it the 35 and a half. And what you got to avoid is the Bulldogs. I saw a little shove come in there late. You can't that was close. It did not get called. It was real close. Ralph, and it's a young team, but you've got to play smart. And that on a road in another stadium with another official, that could easily have been called for 15. You're looking at first down and, and waking up a team that's sleeping right now. Bulldogs have already blocked a punt and come close a couple other times. Peyton Williams back deep. Phillips trying to get it off the flag before he can get it off. No play. Well, the Bulldogs, I think, this is going to go against the Wolf Pack. And you see the off the defensive line using hand uh, movements to try to distract. Red ball prior to the start. False start on the offense. Five yards. Seven. What happened was that uh, Bulldog defensive line kind of inside the heads of the offensive line of the Wolf Pack using little hand fakes, hand gestures to uh, make them flinch a little bit, and they did. This is on. Norm Brady now in the punt. And he shoots it straight up the chimney. Wow. Off the side of his foot, see where they're going to mark it. They're going to mark it at the 33-yard line. That's a two-yard punt, right? Now they're going to mark it up at the 40 Let's see. I had two different officials at the sideline. It's going to go at the 37. So it's about a five yard. Well, when you've had punts blocked like this and the line not being able to keep the Bulldogs out, uh, the intimidation factor can creep in on your kicker as well. I think he felt that, uh, felt the pressure that wasn't there. Let's call it an eight yard kick off the side of the field. And again, Fresno State already leading 20 to nothing. A great field possession at the 37. 11 seconds remaining here in the 
first quarter as Paris Williams loses the football and he couldn't find it out. So that's one thing the Fresno State did not want to do. Maxwell Williams, number six, comes out there with the ball. Paris Gaines went one way and the football went the other. Well, Harris takes a handoff. They got that uh, two tight end formation. It's like it's punched loose right there. Good hard running. Sometimes those things happen. It was not really a mix up. That was just a, just a fumble by aggressive play. And the wolf had. But like you said, Ralph, it's not something you want to have. You don't want to give them the ball back. But if you're going to have a, a top notch team, you have to overcome these things. God, you can see Pat Hill. I think the Bulldogs are lining up offside. No flag, Neil rolling. Chased by Torres Law. Intercepted by Dante Mark. So Nevada turns it right back. No, they're going to say in three. The official came from about the 50 yard line, waving an incomplete. And they are going to wave that off. Well, there you see Coach really in Neil's face. No, they're going to say he scooped it off the turf, and it's an incomplete pass. Timeout. Well, there's no doubt about it. This Bulldog defense has a lot to do with uh, his play so far. They've been coming aggressively with their ears back and their hair on fire, as you see in Bulldog town. And uh, that has a lot to do with it. Again, they keep it on the ground this time. It's Duke is the ball carrier. And on the stop there is Brock Torres on uh, 93 uh, for a loss of one. Well, this is a big, uh, big, big series for the Wolf Pack. You're down 20 to nothing. If you can complete this drive and ideally score seven, okay. you're down 20 to seven with a, uh, with the knowledge at any moment this high-powered offense could kick in gear. So uh, this is going to still be a, a dogfight. Nevada just completed its first third down conversion. The football. Do this. Orlando got a piece of it. Just one hand to try to stop his momentum, but could not. So Dugas picks up the first down to about the first seven yard line. Well, the Bulldogs continuing a trend they started last week against UCLA of even making the offensive successes difficult. Nothing easy out there. Good point. This was also a Fresno State defense that uh, had given up 51% of third down conversions. Teams were converting third down with alarming regularity against the Bulldogs. Not so this time, although he was open over the middle. Diving catch, touchdown, Nevada. Wow. Well, we talk about not giving something up easy, and then you have a play action fake all day to throw. Now, this Hensley may not be the fastest guy, but I want you to watch the acceleration to the ball once it's in the air. A crossing pattern. Extreme acceleration oh. lays out. Just a great catch. What a spectacular catch. 36 yards on the touchdown. Inslee, who had 600 yards in receiving coming into this game, but no touchdowns. Gets his first score of the year. Now he has 46 catches on the season. His totals, NCAA statistics, and the extra point attempt, no good by Mike Phillips. So both teams have missed extra points, but at least Nevada is now on the board. The Wolfpack Trail Fresno State is 20 to 6, 12, 21 remaining before halftime. This isn't just another vineyard. It's an international business operation. This isn't just another farmer driving his tractor. It's a businessman with a capital investment. This is the San Joaquin Valley, the nation's number one agricultural center. And for over 80 years, Valley and Fresno Madera Farm Credit have helped make dreams come to life. From one generation to the next, Valley and Fresno Madera Farm Credit, our roots are in agriculture. by Carl Jr. Big Juicy Burgers and by Buckman Mitchell Insurance providing insurance for business, farm, and home. Welcome back to Reno. Mike Phillips kicking off to 
Fresno State. Rodney Wright back deep to receive for the Bulldogs. The Wolfpack go 60 yards in seven plays on the touchdown from Neal to Inslee. Coming off a turnover. Fresno State fumbled ball. That is a wide drive kick. Take it to the one by Rodney Wright. Lost the 20. In traffic, right. about the 25, maybe the 26-yard line. And Fresno State will go back on offense right there. Well, what you didn't want to happen, happened to turn over the score. But, hey, that's that. Now's now. And uh, you have to shake those things off. The offensive line, Ralph, so far with the uh, with Ede and Snowball have done quite well. It seems like the timing is there. Bullock with an efficient first half so far, and this time he's going deep. Carl Smith, the intended receiver, too long, incomplete at the 25-yard line. But Smith may have had a step on Carmina. But I really like Billy's throw on that. He put a little more air under it. He saw he had one-on-one -on -one coverage. The free safety was no factor to come over and intercept it. So he can put more air on the ball. Last week against UCLA, there were more line drive throws. So you can see him growing, making adjustments. Yeah, that was a little long, but it was a much better thrown ball. We now see Bernard Berrien in the game at one receiver for Fresno State. Bulldogs with a three-receiver set. The others are at the Paris and Sully Mahdi on second and ten. Harris hands the ball carry, cuts it back inside, lowers his head, and runs over Maxwell Williams and picks up the first down. Well, I tell you, Ralph, I'm seeing some things with Paris Gaines in this ball game that kind of lives up to his press clippings. A real slashing type runner here, should take the handoff, nothing there, bounces up, but north and south goes out using his speed on the outside, but then turns it up. Lowers the head, picks up the first down, a 13 yard gain. Gaines' first carry since fumbling the football on the Bulldogs' last possession. So a little added impetus for Paris Gaines. First and ten at the fourth. Inside handoff to the fullback. Jeremy Blackwell picks up about two to the 42. That's good to give that fullback the ball every once in a while. You know, he's out there blocking, sticking his face in there. Knocking people away, running into collisions every every play. You got to give them the ball every now and then to make them feel part of this offense. Blackwell comes out of the game on second and eight. Charles Smith in motion. Again, cuts it back, finding a. Something where there looked to be nothing picked his way through the defense and is about two yards short of the first down. Well, you're right, Ralph. They, the Wolfpack, like to keep that what they call seven in the box there. They do not like to give that up in order to stop the run. But what's happening, the Bulldogs basically are, are running it despite that. There's nothing there yet. The Bulldog running backs are, are cutting and slashing their way to yardage. Well, this is a Nevada defense that's given up a lot of yards already this season. It's Derek Ward will not be taken down until he picks up the first down. He's uh, just almost impossible to break down. He's big. He's just a freshman, but he's six foot even, 255 pounds. But getting back to the numbers on Nevada, uh, this defense has given up 46 points of numbers inflated by the 72 put on the board by Oregon last week. But they're also giving up 512 yards per average over the first three games. That's broken down 286 yards passing and 226 yards running. Fresno State to, on track for that kind of an afternoon. Bulldogs now four or five on third down conversion. This is a first down. Again, Bullock looking for Rodney Wright. He tried to stretch out and make the catch along the sideline, but went off his fingertips. Charles Rogers on the coverage for Nevada. That'll set up second and ten for the Bulldogs. Well, as a throwback route, and uh, had Charlie out there, it was a good thrown ball, well thrown ball. Uh, Charlie just dropped it. Nine fifty-two remaining in the second quarter. It is twenty to seven, Fresno State. Twenty to six, pardon me, Fresno State. Both teams have missed mm -hmm. game. extra points. Mm -hmm. 
Rockwell looked like he was coming on a blitz. Charles Smith with the catch, and look at those moves. First down and more for Charles Smith. Out of bounds at the 29-yard line, and he should have been dropped back around the 50. Yeah, but that this was a miracle. Is, this is what the Bulldogs have to do. You, you have to have game breakers, playmakers. There was a great individual defensive effort by a Wolfpack cornerback. Watch the defender get over the block. Gets over the block. Williams. Charlie picking his way. He's on a punt return now. Basically, that's what that is. Right. This rack attack. Oh, it's a little uh, swing out there, and it's like Andy Lugman was telling us last night, Ralph, the Willie Backer, they stayed in that seven in the box, refused to come out here to help on that receiver. That's not the last time you've seen that play. Great ability to stop and start and change direction. This is going to be a reverse. R.K. Davis cuts it inside, gets to about the 21-yard line, and a flag comes in late. Yeah. You know, down there, it's either face mask or a clip when you have those reverses. Defense tends to turn it back. Yeah, going to be a holding call against the Bulldogs. Right at the, well, this at the point where he cut it inside. Yeah, Ralph, what happens here is a little slow development. See, really good. Good hit. Good hit, but uh, it's a slow developing play. Uh, the timing was not there on that uh, particular play. The Wolfpack was able to see what was developing. Wow, what great work in the truck to really give you a feel for the game. From the spot of the foul, repeat first down. You were right there, probably 10 yards away from that, maybe five yards away from that hit uh, with our on-field microphone. Eight penalties now against Fresno State for 69 yards. That's uh, that's one of the things that they'll talk about in the locker room at halftime. Well, they're getting close to the red zone, the compete zone now, so they'll be playing for points, not necessarily the touchdown. Bullock drops the ball off the snap, and it looks like yes, Nevada comes out of there with the football. Jim Farley, number 47. The ball just never came up to Bill Vola. So that's the second straight turnover for Fresno State. Well, I don't think Billy ever got the ball. And with the injuries to the offensive line, you have uh, people playing a little bit out of position. So number 47, Farley just pounced on it. And that's where one of the changes are from Fresno State on that injury racked offensive line. Rodney Michael, a freshman out of Bakersfield in the center. Yeah. The pass out to Inslee. Inslee for the reception for the 44. And you get the sense that Nevada is getting back into this football game. Well, after being dominated. Well, there you see Inslee just run a little, little 12 yard curl. Basic football that even goes back to my days. No, the turnovers are the great equalizer in the game. They can uh, Lemon up the middle has the first down, spins in Bulldog territory at about the 47 yard line before he stopped. And the Wolfpack on the move again. That was just a good individual effort and good blocking up front by the uh, Wolfpack offensive line. And have had their hands full so far today. Bulldogs for the fourth. Neal now 6 of 12, passing for 85 yards. Of course, the big one, long touchdown to Inslee. First down. We're going to show him the blitz. And they come. Justin Johnson's guy coming over the middle. It's complete. Aaron Ford with a big pickup to Nevada. This is a great play by David Neal. Top of the show, we talked about he was a big, strong, tough kid. Watch him hang in here. Just hangs in there, throws a perfect strike. And uh, the momentum is starting. You see him hanging in there, throwing with a guy draped all over him. The tough kid. 25 yard gain on the completion from Neil to Carter. It's first down. 22-yard line, first and 10. Lemon, the ball carrier. Intended tackle by Spear. Ralph, that was one of those plays that by alignment, the Bulldogs anticipated the play 
and that's where they went. You can't see it here, but the Bulldogs are waving to the right, to the right, to the right. Run to the right. And we had somebody there, but Lemon, just a great individual effort, makes something out of nothing. Nick Burley, Fresno State. This is something that the Bulldogs have battled, it seems, all season long, where they go through stretches where they, they kind of lose their edge. And they can't keep up that intensity the entire time that's needed. Timeout called by Nevada, but Fresno State. Once you do that, you know, you allow Nevada to gain a little confidence, and, and they're right to the point of getting back into that game if they can find their way into the end zone. It's 20-6 with 7 8 remaining in the first half here at the Rock Arena. For four days, shop Scott Shots and... Our Bulldog Sports brought to you by the Bulldog Shop. Tuesday night, your women's volleyball team plays 7th-ranked Stanford at 7 p.m. in the North Gym. Thursday, September 30th, the women's soccer team returns home with a four-game winning streak and take on number seven USC at 7 p.m. at Bulldog Stadium. Keep up to date with your favorite Bulldog teams. Log on to the official Fresno State Athletic website at www.gobulldogs.com. This week in Bulldog Sports has been brought to you by the Bulldog Shop. Senior bar school from 10 to 7 Monday through Saturday. Back in Reno, it's... Second down and lead from the 20 yard line. Nevada threatening to tighten up what is a 20 to 6 game. Neal, gets away from Frank Allen. Now he's going to run around the end, lowers his shoulder and gets hammered in the turf by Tim Skipper. Well, they really, no game. they really confused him on that coverage. What they had was Fox out as a strong safety, then Tim Skipper switched. So Tim Skipper became the strong safety, and they blitzed Fox. Just another example of the sophisticated defense for the Bulldogs. And now the area that has been a problem for Fresno State, third down versus. Over the middle, nearly picked off and there's a flag coming in the backfield, the offensive backfield we'll have to check that, pass was intended for Inslee incomplete Vernon Fox was the defender it's going to be holding against Nevada and I suspect that may be declined I don't know, we'll change the down here I'll take him out of field goal range I think he might take it, but here you see Neil dropping back to pass, a little end around uh, over and under with Skipper throws it out in front it's holding on the offense has been declined fourth down. Well, I think you'd rather take your chance on a field goal kicker than give uh, give that quarterback another shot. But they may go for it on fourth down. We still have the uh, offense on the field. So Nevada will go on fourth down. Fourth and about eight. And now. Timeout is going to be called by Fresno State. Is that right? That's right. Their first timeout. Bulldogs take their first. Well, I think uh, they didn't anticipate this uh, move by the Wolfpack to go for this early in the ball game and forego three points. But although thinking back to that PAT attempt, we their kicker may not be uh, the you know a, uh, Tom Dempsey. For those of you who remember Tom Dempsey, uh, so it actually makes some sense and also. Also, if they don't make it, it leaves the Bulldogs on their own 20-yard line. So not really that mysterious of a move when you think about it. We have Kristen, our, our helper here from the Matt Arena, doing a great job flipping through those pages like nobody. Kristen, well, you'll get it. She's great. She straightened my tie. But she didn't pick any of those horses for you last night. No, I don't. Think I don't. <laughs> <laughs> you, we ought to tell you what's going I on here. I'd like to see them run. There is a, my wife knows that I wouldn't do that. I'd just say hi to what? Kim, Lauren, Heather, Austin, and all the folks at the Bulldog Brewery, who I know are rooting on the Bulldogs. You have those mm -hmm. that shrimp over there? Excellent. Yeah, I love it. We'll tell you about what's going on here. Harley Davidson Convention in Reno. After the big fourth down play. Pressure by Justin Johnson. Looking for the end zone. Carter is there, juggles it incomplete. Uh, 
But I tell you, boy, he had it. The, and the bulldog corner, who was that? I tell you, he. <laughs> we got away with that one. Curtis Edwards. But Curtis Edwards fell asleep a little bit. He didn't realize the strength of Neal's arm. He doesn't expect this ball to be coming. You can see. Lost uh, he, just a little lapse there. He has a very strong arm, can throw the, the cross uh, the field. It's about a 40-yard throw from where he was, and I don't think that he's seen that kind of arm strength this year. Carter had made a catch earlier in the drive for a 25-yard gain and a first down, but this time they turn it over on now. It's Bulldogs go on offense. Paris Gaines. Knocked out of bounds after a gain of about a yard. Rockwell, number 51, was there. Well, I tell you, turnovers, as we said earlier, are a great equalizer. They can take you, get you in ball games, can take you out of ball games. And the Bulldogs defensively were very, very, uh, I won't say fortunate because they earned it. They played good, strong defense. But uh, you have to be a little bit fortuitous to come out of there with no points on that, uh, that exchange. <laughs> Gain of a yard, second and nine. Smith in motion. Bulldogs keep it on the ground. James Tillman takes it to about the 20, 24 and a half yard line. Mm -hmm. You see Billy looking at his play, plays on his wristband. They actually have a lot of options here. Drop back and throw the ball, which he's done well today. Throw a little quick screen out there. Or give the ball to Paris Gaines in six minutes. I mean, a lot of options for the Bulldogs. You see, we have seven in the box. Wolf back and seven in the box. Fresno State four or five on third down conversions. The swing pass to Gaines. Blockers. He's going to be very close to the first down, but I think he'll be about a yard short. I think you're right. Man, you can see Paris. He's looking at it. I think they're going to be a little short, Robbie. The officials have called a timeout to take a measurement. Billy's uh, indicating they're about three inches short. That's right. what. So it'll be fourth down, and with a 20 to 6 lead. And down here, the Bulldogs have no reason to gamble. Joel Comfort will come on for his second punt of the game. The first one went 37 yards. Trevor Inslee, number 87, is back deep. Approaching five minutes remaining in the second quarter. With the Comfort. And he takes it on the run. He's got the Lost the football, but got it back. There have been several opportunities now where the ball is bouncing about his way after fumbles. But uh, the Wolfpack has been able to recover. Seven yard return. Well, I tell you. Just a minute, let me get this one out of the way. Sunday night is a night of season premieres, beginning at 7.30 with King of the Hill. Then at 8, Mel Gibson guest stars on The Simpsons, followed by season premieres of Futurama and Family Guy, along with an encore presentation of Action on KMPH Fox 26. Now go ahead. What I was going to say, Ralph, is the defense has been on the field quite a long time. You had to fumble, and they drove the ball down, and then you go three and out. The defense is playing well, but you can't continue to put this kind of pressure on them. Neil's audibly. Right Neil has to call a timeout. It was a it was a case of gamesmanship there, where I think Neil was barking out a change of the play, and then you saw Orlando Huff, number 49, calling out defensive signals on the Bulldogs side. So we'll take a timeout. 4:55 remaining here in the second quarter. 20 to six, Fresno State leads the Wolfpack. 
It's about summer and driving down the road. But most of all, it's coming to an end. It's about getting you into your choice of an award-winning Chrysler or Plymouth car or minivan before summer ends. About saving before the summer is over. Depending on model, get big cash allowances or low APRs or low lease rates. The Chrysler Plymouth Summer Clearance. It all ends soon. See your Northern California Chrysler and Plymouth dealer. The new place to be, the only place to buy. Sorry. Uh-uh. Not enough. No. Still short. With a great taste that will fill you up and never let you down. Paper or plastic? Paper. Make it a fun light. Guys, need a receipt? You know, Italian-made suits are among the most fashionable. Of course, our prices have a way of making them look even better. The Men's Warehouse. You're going to like the way you look. I guarantee it. It's the right team at the right time. Join Kristen Hulk and Eric Alvarez for the Valley's only primetime newscast, the KMPH 10 o'clock news, tonight on your station. Bulldog fans, make sure to buy your rainbow Fresno State Bulldog funds. When grocery shopping for all your barbecues and game day parties, portion of all bun sales benefits the athletic department. Also, have your buns at all home game tailgaters. Watch for the Rainbow Bulldog Fun Patrol for prizes. Our first down here with throw. Over the middle, complete. That flag comes in. Maybe a penalty on Fresno State. The intended receiver was Mo Jones. He may have been held up there by one of the Bulldog defenders. Well, that was a real late flag coming in there. And uh, I have no problem with the call, but a little quick on the draw would be advisable. I just hate to see those late flags when you sit and look at it for a while and then decide that, uh, okay, I'm going to call a penalty. Fresno State got off to a 20 to nothing lead uh, early in this game. Midway through the first quarter, the Bulldogs were in great shape, but uh, the offense has been silenced since that point. And you do sense that Fresno State is being kind of lulled into a false sense of security here. Well, Kevin Cole... Uh, told us they one of the things they really need to do defensively. The play has been ruled defensive pass interference. It's a spot foul and a first down. And one of his big goals was to get David Neal out of his comfort zone. They've done that pretty much for the first half. Uh, you don't want to let him get back in there because if he gets in there, he's the kind of kid that can light him up and set that scoreboard thing like one of those uh, slot machines in the lobby. For hotel. Hmm. You like that no, I I Neil will roll. Skipper is chasing him, so is Orlando Huff, and Neil goes down after a gain of about one. The, uh, uh, I also had a question about the penalty when there was an earlier pass interference call in the, in the game. There was a 15 yard mm -hmm. penalty against Bulldogs. And this time on the pass interference call, it was a spot foul, which amounted to about a five-yard penalty. They've changed the game so much off. I have no idea. I'm, I'm Back when it was pass interference, it was 15 yards. And, I, uh, yeah. They change it there every year, so I, I just uh, listen to the referee. And Perhaps he gave the wrong call to us. But maybe it was a defensive holding call, which is a spot foul. Five-yard penalty. Chase wrapped up and sacked Fresno State. Yeah. Tabidi Lockhart, number 99. Frank Battle, number 96. And that's going to be a loss of about five. But in college football, it's a 15-yard penalty as far as I know for pass interference. It's not a spot foul. There you One, see the front two. four doing a great job. Neil Liberty had a chance to set up. Tries to escape the outside. Bulldogs draped all over him. Great up front defensive pressure. So a big third down play for both sides. Looking over the middle, and that pass was well, I believe, by Peyton Williams, a great defensive play. Mo Williams, Mo Jones, the intended receiver. Well, here's another example of Kevin Coyle. <laughs> I mean, uh, so far, Kevin is, is winning the, the chess game because they played 
they gave what appeared to be a zone look to David Neal. And they were zoned in the two halves of the field with the safeties. But they were playing man-to-man -man underneath. So he thought he had the slant to the center of the field. And there was Peyton Williams all over him. Norm Brady on the punt. Again, the Bulldogs come after him, but he gets it off. And again, it's a very short. Bounces straight up. And is spotted at the 50-yard line. One of the Fresno State players is hobbling off the field. Like that maybe Lawrence Deck, number 36. Monday night at 7, Rachel falls head over heels for the guy next door on Friends, only on your station, KMPH, Box 26. Brady with a 10-yard punt on that one. I think his previous punt was about 8 yards. So the punting game has not been good for Nevada in this first half. One block by Fresno State resulted in a touchdown. First and 10 Bulldogs, 20-6 to six Fresno State leading. 3.20 remaining in the first half. Derek Ward puts his head down and picks up about seven, maybe eight. That's another good run by Derek. Got down to the 43-yard line. I take this time to get well wishes to Ben Body and Joe Shy back there, fellas. You will get well. You will return. I've been there. I know it's tough watching this at home, but you will be back. Shy with a broken ankle and Body with a broken finger, both out for the season and, and Ahmed Vani really the broken finger doesn't describe it, his finger was just shattered and, and really needed to be put back together. Penalty flags come in and stops the play. Well, what the Bulldogs want to do here, they dead ball prior to the snap, ball started on the offense, five yard penalty. I tell you, these see, it may seem harmless at this stage of the game, you're second and two, and get a little five yard penalty, but it can really change the complexion of the game here. Uh, you're looking at two minutes and 43 seconds, now you're second and long, you need more points on the board here. They've been stuck at 20 for a long time, the offense is getting a little bit out of sync with fumble snaps and such. They need to get the momentum back. On a second down play, so Fresno State will have third and uh, about eight as we approach two minutes remaining in the first half here at Reno. With 4.59 remaining in the first quarter, Fresno State took that 20 to nothing lead. Bulldogs have not scored since and have not been effective on offense, fumbling on two of those possessions. Fortunately, Nevada has only managed six points because the Fresno State defense has really responded. Nevada comes with the blitz. Dumped over with the Paris Games. He had the first down inside the corner. Stop the clock. Well, really, a, a, a really well conceived play by Andy Ludwig. They keep the, the Willie Backer now is starting to move out when they go with those two double wides. And they drop the little delay over the middle to Paris Gaines where that linebacker vacated. Now the clock started again at 145 and they moved the chains after the first down. Number 47 with a solid defensive play Jim Farley. A loss of about one. So Fresno State will have to call a timeout. Sorry, Fresno State, that's their second timeout of the half. Bulldogs will have one timeout left with a minute 18 remaining. They'll come to the sideline and talk it over. One timeout each remaining. Fans, when your Bulldogs return home next Saturday, come experience the homecoming festivities and the highly acclaimed Wax Showdown versus TCU. The Friday night pep rally and dinner at the old softball field on campus begin at 5.30 p.m. The annual homecoming parade Saturday morning starts at 10. Don't miss the fun, only six days away. You see Bullock there talking with Andy Ludwig upstairs. Coach Pat Hill. Trying to come up with a play here, second and 11. But they really, they understand, they need to get some points on this board to grab the momentum back. Go in that locker room with momentum 
that will carry over into the second half. You don't want to leave on on fumbles and three, uh, you know, three and outs. Derek Horn has 103 yards on six carries. It's a career day for him already. Two touchdowns. Ward is in the game at tailback. Also in the backfield, R.K. Davis. Make it come this way. Good job of throwing it out. Pass incomplete. That was a good play with those two tight ends lining up near one another on one side, and Volek rolls the other way, looking for R.K. Davis. It's an unbalanced line. Does a little play fake away. Jason Burke, the not linebacker, much there. smelled it out. Yeah. Just, just not much there. I think maybe a shorter down and distance, shorter distance rather. They may have respected to play fake a little bit more, but they just pin their ears back uh, expecting to play fake. So it's third down. Third and about 11 for Fresno State. 113 remaining. Pull out blitz and the pass goes to Charles Smith and he's got running room inside the 20. Rocks it about the 17 yard line. Nevada paid for coming with the jailhouse blitz. That's right, and he had the perfect play, that little bubble bubble screen out to Charlie Smith. Here you see the backer moving up, blitzes from the inside, dumps it right where he vacates it. That little slant bubble screen, they call it, and it's the rack attack at it again. And Bill Bowling did a great job of getting he that did. ball off. He did, Ralph. I mean, that's one tough cookie here, number seven. We talk about the toughness of David Neal. They don't come any tougher uh, than Billy Bowling. 22-yard gain on the play, 105 remaining here. They'll start the clock now at one minute. Well, you're, ideally, you want seven points here, Ralph. Uh, you, know, you can bet he wants seven points. Uh, but you want to, again, protect the ball and get to sure three. Not so sure you want to allow so much time to go off the clock either. Lost 20 seconds now to finally get the playoff. Kyle Smith, the intended receiver, that will stop the clock. Yeah, Charlie, it's, that, that just happens every once in a while. It, no need to even, uh, no need to even uh, analyze it. I mean, we've all been there and done it. Ball right there, boom, a little bit out in front of it. Charlie knows he's going to have it. Those so just happen. You'll get it next time, son. Second and ten. Paris Gaines comes out of the game. As does Charles Smith. Vince Branstetter in at a second tight end. And Mark K. Davis, number eight, in at a receiver. Roll right, roll. Branstetter complete to the five yard line. That'll stop the clock to move the chains with the first down. 32 seconds remaining. And what you don't want to do down here is get excited. You want to keep your poise. So you want to keep it under control. You have the lead. You have the sure three points already in the bag. You got one time out. Enough time to run a couple, two, three real solid plays. And they're showing the urgency now because they're getting up to the line without the huddle on first and goal. Mac Moses for about the um, time three yard line. And they do. Fresno State will take its last time now, out. 23 sorry, seconds. Fresno left. State, that's their last time out of the half. Now, one thing that had worked well for Fresno State was uh, just giving the ball on the, on the power play to Derek Ward. Well, it's that's definitely uh, a possibility here. You risk running the, let the clock run out as well when you got 23 seconds left and no timeouts. What you have to do here is you, you've got two or three choices. One of them to throw a fade, doesn't take a lot of time, and throw it where only your receiver can get it. Uh, a slant pass, which is a little bit more dangerous, we found out last week against uh, UCLA. I don't see a Ricky Manning on the field right now. But uh, those are possibilities, quick, hitter, quick hitters, because you don't have a lot of room in that end zone to maneuver, Ralph. Monday night at 6.30, what's the only thing that could unite Drew and Mimi? Find out on Drew Carey, only on your station, KMPH, Fox 26. But it is... 
imperative Fresno State get some points out of this possession. With momentum and a big lead. Marco Davis, the receiver, to the top of his point on the left side. They're rolling the left side. Touchdown, Billy Jack Pierce. Well, I tell you, well executed play, great pace, play fake. A lot of uh, poise by Billy Bowling. And Billy Jack Pierce runs a great route. Just like you draw it up, see good play fake. Boy, and there's Billy Jack getting in front of that end zone. Billy lays it up there. Good hands for the young man from New Cannon. For the point out there. The Sun 6'1, 230 pounds. Finding the end zone again with 19 seconds remaining. Hannah on to attempt the extra point. Try and give Fresno State a 27-6 lead. Billy Jack, over Fresno. You can sit back down in your chair. I know you're up on the ceiling there for a while. Kick is up, and it is good. So Fresno State's offense scores for the uh, there it is. first time here in the second quarter on the replay. Just, just well designed, like you draw it up uh, on the chalkboard. Sometimes life is good. One of the things the coaches were telling us last night was the, just the, how much uh, more ability the team had to go to its tight ends this year. And uh, you've got uh, Vince Brandstetter, who's had a couple of touchdown catches. And now Billy Jack Pierce has also cut a couple. Call them not flashy, but solid. One of their strongest points of their offense. Blocking, route running, run great routes. They're always there when you need them. Nice 10 play, 50 yard drive for the touchdown. And now Hannah will get ready to kick off here in the closing seconds of the first half. 27 to 6, Bulldogs with a 21 point lead. I'd like to take this time to say hello to my partner, Paul the Mighty Quinn, and his family, Lisa and the kids, and all the folks that are in workshop doing their showcase tonight. I have to miss them. I don't like to miss them, but I know you can understand we're here with our beloved Bulldogs. So, do a great job tonight, my husband. So there will be no return for Nevada. The Wolfpack will have it uh, at the 20 yard line with 19 seconds and one timeout remaining, trailing by three touchdowns. Well, you fully expect Wolfpack to run this clock out with 19 seconds to go and go in and regroup. The last thing you need is to start throwing the ball around, have another ball picked off, or have one picked off, and. Uh, and give up any more points. So I think they'll either hand the ball off to Lemon or uh, I can even see Neil taking a knee. Neil Neely. All right, the Bulldogs still trying to get their defensive personnel on the field. Nick Burley, number 90, finally checks in. Oh, absolutely. What was I thinking? <laughs> Shut my mouth. Pass is complete over the middle. All of that analy analyzation for what? Nothing. Bo just, Jones just broke out little I know. <laughs> I was just thinking about that. Where we are. The clock, 12 seconds. They called a timeout to put a little time back on the clock. And I think you're trying to throw a safe route and, uh, and just hope something breaks. Neil will go over to the Nevada sideline and talk to the coaches there. Well, they're in a, a little bit of a free fall, there's no doubt. And it, it, what makes it uneasy for the Bulldogs is the explosiveness of this offense. Even though you're missing Higgins, uh, you, you know that they're capable of striking and striking quick. And uh, so they're going through tough times, but they do have the tools, the Wolfpack, to turn things around in a hurry in this ball game and for their season. That's a fine young quarterback there. Let's see. Coach Hill confirmed with the referees. He plays, I tell you, this man coaches every second of every game. Last year, it, uh, it helped us win a ball game, or stay in a ball game for one second. He just, uh, every second is valuable to him. Neil hit as he throws, completes it. That's the third of Burrow looking for the sideline. Gets out of bounds at about the 30 with five seconds remaining. Well, he's got the arm streak for a Hail Mary at this point. Sure does. You know, and uh, you uh, get a pass interference call. Or, I kind of like what they're doing. I just, you know, you're down 27-6 to six after being beaten 70-10. to 10. I, 
you know, why are you going to hold back? And you're 0-3 to start the season. Your worst start since 1980. This one's expected to go. It goes short. It's incomplete. And there is one second left on the clock. Burr again, the intended receiver. Well, I tell you, I again, this kid here is a fine, fine quarterback, and and I don't know if I'm just getting half information or what, but if he did suffer a concussion last week, and again, not saying he's not going to play well, I don't think he should be out there. We've got to have some kind of um, sanity come back to college football. My goodness, I mean, that's a head injury. That, uh, I don't know if other takes some slack and gets some heat from that, but uh, that's my belief. Good way to end the first half of the Fresno State defense as Nick Burley and Vernon Fox just wrap up Lemon for a loss. And the Bulldogs will go to the locker room with a good-sized lead here. It's 27-6, Fresno State over Nevada at halftime. We are hooking up head coach Pat Hill for his comments. And Coach, if you're there, let's uh, have your observations on the first half. So I think we played very hard in the first half, but, you know, offensively, we, we've turned the ball over twice, and uh, 21 points is not enough against a team like Reno. We're going to have to come out and really play well in the second half. Our defense is playing very well right now, and we got to continue in the second half. This, this game uh, with a 21-point lead is not... Yeah, this is near over. There's still a lot of football left to go, but I'm very happy with the way we're playing so far except for the turnover. Thank you very much, Coach. We are at halftime. Fresno State leading Nevada 27-6 in Reno. State at halftime leading Nevada 27 -6. State at halftime, leading Nevada 27 to 6. Three touchdown cushion for the Bulldogs, who uh, really looked strong in the first quarter and then uh, finished the first half with a 10 play, 50 yard drive. Ralph Woodlong with Alan Autry, and we're going to take a look at uh, some of those first half highlights. And uh, there were a lot of them for Fresno State. When we get to the stats, things won't, uh, won't look as one sided as the score, but uh, Fresno State started on its first possession, overcame three penalties, and Derek Ward got the first touchdown of the game on a short run, 7 0. And then you had a block punt by who else? Derek Ward, scooped up by Rodney Wright right here. And the Bulldogs find themselves up 14 zip. So Derek Ward had a hand in Fresno State's first two touchdowns. And a little later in the second quarter, he would make a major impact on the third. And this is a play of the game so far as Ward finds nothing off tackle and cuts up the middle. And then the race is on. There was a point where Ward looked like he might be tripped up by Charles Rogers, but uh, no, the 255-pounder just rumbles to the end zone. 86 yards for the touchdown, 20 to nothing then. And then you have the Wolfpack uh, after a Bulldog turnover. Neal to Inslee, great effort here to lay out. Bounces into the end zone to cut the lead. 20 to 6 at that point. It stayed 20 to 6 for quite some time. Fresno State finally got the offense going again, closing out that half with a 10 play drive. Billy Bolek to Billy Jack Pierce. The two Billies hooking up for the touchdown, and that was it 27 to 6 at halftime. Fresno State uh, making some big plays, and the special teams coming through with the block punt. And you take a look at the first half stats brought to you by Enterprise Rent a Car. Alan, I think if you looked at those stats and didn't know the score, you would not know that it was a three touchdown game when, when Fresno State is uh, even in first downs and 10 penalties and has turned the ball over twice. Well, that's what happens when you have a big play team. We talk about big plays. We just saw the highlights. The Bulldogs counteract all of that balance with uh, some big, big plays, special teams, offense, and strong defense. Going into the locker room, head coach Pat Hill said, 21-point uh, lead, this game is far from over. An explosive Nevada team is still out there for another 30 minutes of football. We'll have the second half for you when we come back to Reno. Mackey Stadium in Reno. Nevada preparing to kick off to start the second half here. Fresno State leading 27-6. Second half is underway. Rocky Wright will take it five yards deep in the end zone. Put a knee down. Touchback. It'll be first and ten. Bulldogs from the 20-yard line. Well, they get the ball back on offense, which is exactly where I know Pat Hill wants them to have it. 
albeit the defense have played a uh, tremendous game so far, the offense is starting to click, Ralph. And uh, Very efficient and effective first half for Volek, 10 of 15 passing. His ninth touchdown of the season. And the Bulldogs, as you saw in the first half stats, were able to run the football effectively for over 150 yards, but 86 of those coming on the one touchdown by Derek Ward. And again, sticking with that north-south uh, running game that Andy Ludwig spoke about last night, they really want to hammer away at that. Again, set the tempo just like they did in the first half. Nevada will be in the whack next season. This was an emotional game for the Wolfpack coming in. It's homecoming. Again, Fresno State keeping the football on the ground. Start the second half. Tillman with a gain of about three. Outside of the 25, about the 25 and a half yard line. It'll be third down. Bulldogs can get two to 30. Well, when you talk about starting to put some nails in some coffins here, this is a big down. Bulldogs, they can drive down there and score. Uh, would go a long way in a sense to secure victory totally, but it's, uh, it takes a giant leap towards that. Bowling. Looking deep. Pass is nearly intercepted by number six, Maxwell Williams, intended for the Martin Davis. He ran down down real bad. Williams. Getting up slowly over on the sideline. There you go. He's all right. He is up. He comes back out on the field, and they say, "No, we got somebody to take your place." And the official pulls him off the field. Tender folks, those officials, aren't they? <laughs> Mr. Warmth out there. Go take care of yourself. Get out of here. We got a game going. So Joel Gifford on the punt for Fresno State. Insley back at his 33-yard line, waiting to kick. Good snap and a good kick. Although it just kind of hangs up there in the wings. Easily with a fair kick at the 37 yard line. That's where Nevada will start its first offensive possession of the second half as Fresno State begins the half with uh, three plays and a punt. Which I'm sure is exactly what. Coach Tisdale wanted them to do. Come out, let's get the football back from him, he said. Let's get the offense going, get them in a lull. Cut this to 27-13 real quick, and you're back in the ball game. Three receivers to the top of the screen. Lemon, the lone running back behind quarterback David Neal. Swings it out to Kingsley. Splits the defenders and gets across the 50 yard line to the 49. Upended there by Vernon Fox. Well, that little uh, quick hitch out there, bubble screen, whatever you want to call it. Three step drop, swings it out here to Inslee. Good after he catches the ball, running it. Calling it a gain of 14, first and 10. Lemon, the ball carrier, trying the left side, gets down the sideline, upended, out of bounds, very close to the first down marker. Well, again, what you don't want to do defensively, you have to play at a peak level all throughout this whole ball game. Uh, they're just too explosive, the Wolfpack offense. I'm sensing a little bit of lack of, I would call it lackadaisical, but not quite to to the peak that they were in the first half. Well, you know you're going to get the Wolfpack's best effort right now. They're not right. going to just come out of the locker room and decide to turn it on in the fourth quarter. They're going to want to open the second half with the best effort they can put forth and try and get some points on the board to get back in the game. Neal. Close to another first down. About a yard short. As Inslee just uh, continues to add to his nation's leading total for receptions. Well, they're trying to find a little five-step drop. Tussles it out here. Pitch and catch. They're trying to find creative ways to get the ball to their their big playmate. Different sets, different looks. Lemon off the left side. Again, he's upended, but he has the first down inside the 25-yard line. And I really like what the Wolfpack is doing here. They realize they have a lot of time. They've got a whole half to play. 
They're not just indiscriminately throwing the ball down the field into coverage and those sorts of things. They're just playing the game, taking the drive as it comes, safe passes. First and ten after the six yard game. This time, straight pass back to Jeffrey Holmes. He's out of bounds at about the 18 yard line by Fresno State's Dante March. Well, the defense is playing it pretty much straight up. Not a lot of blitzes in this series so far. Playing zone, zone man. They run them off a little man coverage here. Man underneath the zone in the, in the uh, secondary swings it out here. What happened is the uh, Wolfpack receivers had ran the Bulldogs off of that man underneath coverage. That's a lot of running room for the running back. Six yard game makes it second and four. And Lemon back in the back of the Picks up the first down and more, cuts it inside, touchdown, and an impressive offensive drive to open the second half for Nevada. Well, they had the Bulldog defensive line back on their heels. Uh, that was a just a, I, I don't know, it just looked like a Bulldog just standing there. It was no uh, slants, no, no push by the defensive line. 18 yard touchdown run by Lemon here. I see they're kind of just standing there, just standing there, and get pushed back. And that's when you give a back like Lemon, that kind of room, that kind of uh, push, he's going to score. And the extra point attempt is blocked. No good. So Fresno State gives up six, but not seven. And I suspect when the defensive unit gets back to the sideline, the coaches will get them together and, and fire them up again. This is a game of adjustments. Fresno State is going to have to adjust now to what Nevada changed at halftime. 27-12 in the third quarter. Time running back. Just a freshman. Time running back. Just a freshman. Nevada lineman got back. This time forward. Fighting for the first down. He was kind of tripped up in the backfield. Horatio Leva, number 90, was the one who had his arms around the ankles. And they have a, or most teams have a play when there's somebody jumping off sides like that with this short yardage where you just tap the center's rear and you'll snap the ball. But with the, the changes in the offensive line, I'm sure that's not something that uh, they want a chance right now. But they had it offside if they were snap the ball. Lego, I believe, was the guy who jumped, got back, and ended up making the play anyway. So it's third. Third down and about one. Inside, Blackwell is going to be short. Stood up by, I believe, Rockwell, number 51. Well, it ran into a wall, didn't he? Yeah, it was a, a little counter play. Uh, may have been a counter trap. They're going to measure, but this is not going to be a first. Well, time. if they give him the forward progress, and I, I don't think they're giving him much of it. He actually may have had it, but they stood him up straight. When you stand somebody up straight, uh, the officials tend to be influenced and give you less forward momentum. But, you know, smart play, everybody in the world is thinking it's going to go to uh, Derek Ward. And you give it to Blackwell. And that's uh, another example of, of Coach Hill and Andy Ludwig involving everybody into the offense. It will be short, but uh, Bill Bullock is coming back out to the huddle. So this might be one of those opportunities to, to attempt to draw a team offside. Well, or just a, give it to your big guy, Ward, and well, try I, and pick up the first I tell you, for this game what it is. It's a turning point. Pivotal, pivotal point. Pivotal, pivotal, pivotal for, uh, point in this ball game. Fourth down, Fresno State. Ward has the first down. So, you just go with the, with the guy who's really been the big time player in this game. How do you argue with that, Ralph? I mean, uh, and the kid gets the, the, uh, the breakaway yards. He gets the tough yards. He can block. He blocks punts. Eric Ward, one whale of a ball player. Great job, too, by that offensive line. That uh, 
really got the push up up front. Everybody knew where it was going. They dug in, got up underneath the shoulder pads, and got some push back. First down. So the drive continues for Fresno State. Now to the 42. First down. Bullock looking deep. He wants Charles Smith. Catch by Smith, touchdown Bulldogs. And a great play, Ralph. Billy Bolick puts yeah, air under the ball yeah, and lets yeah, Charlie yeah, Smith run for it. He learned from last week. He looked at those films. Come back, he's taking a lot of heat, a lot of criticism from, from, from some folks. Uh, I just love to see this for the young man. A great play by Charlie Smith. Now watch to the rhythm and watch him step up into the pocket. Steps, steps up in the pocket. You see that? Put the mayor into the ball. Let Charlie go get it. There you go. It's man coverage. No free safety. Charlie goes and gets it. Smith with great concentration to catch the ball. Carmina put his left arm on the left shoulder. He's good. Hannah with the extra point up and good. It's a nine play drive for the Bulldog offense. And Fresno State responds to Nevada and puts it in the end zone. 9 13 remaining in the third quarter here in Reno. It's 34 12, Bulldogs leading the Wolfpack. me guys or do we really look ridiculous man for free bud light i'm doing 79 shut the door you're letting in a draft for the great taste that won't fill you up and never let you down make it a bud light she said well when do you when are you planning on getting married and I never spoke. He just jumped right in and said, well, why buy the cow when the milk is free? Does that sound familiar to you? Wow. Said in jest. Wow. You don't make up something like that, Mr. Wells. It was in a joking way, but no, it wasn't nice. That's not a joke. Justice with an attitude. Judge Judy. Monday morning at 9 on your station, Fox 26. Tonight, join Kristen Hoke and Eric Alvarez for the Valley's only primetime newscast. It's the right team at the right time. The KMPH 10 o'clock news only at our station, KMPH Fox 26. And again, I want to remind you, we have weather with Lloyd Lindsay Young and sports with Dana Green, two very important members of the team. 34-12, Fresno State leading on a nine-play 80-yard drive. Nevada scored at a minute 25. Bulldogs scored at 252. Uh, I was just sitting there thinking that, Ralph. You know, now they're only back up, what, 22 points. They were down 21. Uh, Coach Hill said 21's not enough. If you were sitting here with a 22-point lead with two minutes to go in the, in the third quarter, it might be a little bit easier. But uh, The kick goes into the end zone and will not be taken out by Johnny Holmes. So the ball will be spotted at the 20-yard line. First down for Nevada from there. Well, I think the Bulldogs here, if the Bulldogs can get this ball back and uh, and stuff them and get it back at three and out or maybe give up maybe one first down and get it back, uh, I think the momentum swing in the Bulldog favor may be insurmountable for, for the Wolf Pack. But it's a big series, a defensive series right here. Well, I think... Nevada cannot stop Fresno State's offense. The Bulldogs stopped themselves with two fumbles on the first half. But the, really, the defense for Nevada has not stopped Fresno State yet. A little too tall. Pass here on the end. It will be second down and ten. Well, I think the Wolfpack are starting to paint themselves into a little bit of a corner where it's become a... Uh, Neil Insley Lemon Joe and Kevin Coyle, I guarantee, is going to start taking away Insley. Uh, he's open there in the seam a little bit, but you see Peyton Williams coming in there. They're not giving him much anymore. And you're going to have to utilize your other weapons, I feel, uh, in order to get back in this ballgame. Well, it's going to be a 50 pass game for Neil, I believe. In the backfield, Lemon is dropping for a loss. Frank Battle, number 96. And, uh, nothing going in the running game. Had a couple of, uh, been able to break off a couple of runs. But other than that, Nevada has not been able to run the football in the rest of Now, on third down in this quarter, Kevin Coyle has been played it pretty much straight up with his defense, not blitzing, and paid a price with the touchdown. I wouldn't be surprised to see someone coming uh, from both sides on this play. 
Third down after a loss of two. Two of nine on third down conversions. That one over the middle for three. John Sanders had great coverage on Bo Jones, but it's going to be a first down for the Wolfpack. So well, Nevada now three of ten on third down conversions. Played it straight up again, Ralph. And uh, dropping off uh, seven in his own coverage. And uh, Neil just hits the seam. But uh, the Bulldogs could be getting into a bend, but don't break philosophy with their, with their defense. Justin Johnson getting off the field in time for Fresno State. Oh, Get Hanging in there. Hanks to have the pass. Big wounds as easily as he run out of bounds finally. That was kind of a quick block on the head. Now, Peyton Williams, I don't see who did it. It was almost like a half Nelson came around the neck of Peyton Williams. A little flying mare. <laughs> flying mare, yeah, you, all, you like that one. Here we go. Let's see if we can see the block on Peyton Williams. He's number 24 in white. Right there. Oh, right there. I believe it was Nathan, the tight end. A 41-yard gain by Inslee. So it's first down at the 25. Lemon. Again, no running room for Nevada. Run out of bounds at the 25. But get to the 24. Smart play by Lemon. He knows time is a factor here. Other backs that I've seen would take that ball and try to, you saw there was nothing there, but take that ball and try to go up there for what, maybe one, two yards? No, he hustled to the sideline to stop the clock. Smart heads up play by Chris Lemon. And that's where the water is over there, too. Well, that Second down. Again, it's Lemon this time up the middle. He has room. Very close to a first down. He will have a first down inside the 15 to the 14. Brock Torrestal, number 93, in on the stop for Fresno State. Well, even though the Bulldogs are up 34-12, it's starting to take on those dimensions of a shootout. We talked about at the top of the show as one of the keys to the game of just simply being able to put up more points than the Wolfpack. So far, the Bulldogs have 34 12, seven and a half minutes remaining in the third quarter. Neal intercepted by Fresno State, and it's Aquino Giramonte. He knew it was coming, jumped up and picked it out of the air. And the Wolfpack turned the ball over. It was a pretty good drive for that half going. Fresno State will take over on the 20. Well, that will take the air out of your sails pretty quick here. See the G man sees pass, jumps up. A lot of stick him on his hands. Boy, you're right about that. <laughs> You've seen so many guys get hit like that, and the ball just bounces away. Well, you know, being a D line, they don't give many opportunities like that. David Neal, like not happy. It's like they'll tackle eligible, you know. That gets in there and puts that in, scores a touchdown. Yeah. 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 Offense, they will keep it on the ground, getting those tough yards. Now, Derek Ward came off the field once, and I, I thought, did I say that he weighed 255 pounds? And I looked at my chart, and it said 255. So I went over on another one, and it, it, 225. Well, he, that's more like it as, as he comes off the field. That's not 255. He just runs like he's back at 255 pounds. But he's a 225-pounder, and he has had a career day already. Still have six and a half minutes to play in the third quarter. He's late in jumping and getting back, or did he? Now comes a flag as the play clock ran down to zero. Game on the offense, five yards. Penalty. Well, the official spotting that ball in a hurry. Getting the clock going in a hurry. The Bulldogs and, and the Wolfpack will have to be aware of it. Fresno State had 10 penalties in the first half. Stable by the GMC Suburban. So the ball, the penalty goes back to the 20, negating the five yard run by Ward. James Tillman caught the line of scrimmage. Drop for no gain as we have a little scrimmage going on back behind the line. And uh, one of the Fresno State players got the worst of that. It was Leva and apparently Rob Gatrell. There he is, number 68. So we'll keep an eye on that. 
They got uh, kind of locked up there, and then uh, Leva I saw was flailing his arms away and may have caught uh, Gattrell around the throat area. Well, what you need to do if you're the Bulldogs, you don't want to start playing tentative. you got six minutes to go. It's the third and nine. Uh, you want to have a good, safe uh, passing play or give the ball off. Smith in motion. Pass incomplete intended for Harris. The flag comes in and... And hit, it either hit Rockwell or Carminer <laughs> to, to emphasize the point of the penalty. Well, the flags are coming in awful late, Ralph. I, now, this will obviously probably go in, in the uh, Bulldogs' favor. But, you know, the play, I mean, there's seconds and seconds. It was fine. You get ready to get back in the huddle, and here comes in a flag. And a personal foul on the offense. Pass interference on the defense. They will cancel. Repeat third down. Well, I don't know what the personal foul was unless it was a continuation of the battle in the uh, interior offensive line. Well, you know that uh, frustration is starting to mount on the Wolf Pack at the intersection and getting beat last uh, week like uh, by the score that they did. And these are proud young athletes. I mean, it's a quality program. They're just not used to this happening. The problem is they're proving last week's game was no fluke. Very, very good in this game. As Volek rolls and unloads. Charles Smith comes back to get the football, and they're going to say he was out of bounds. So Fresno State will have to punt with 5.25 remaining in the third quarter, the 34 12 lead. The old comfort comes on. Well, here's one of those safe plays, pass plays, or if there is such a thing. You see Smith going down, pushes off his man, breaks clear. Billy throws it where only. Well, you only have to have one foot in. I don't know about this one. Looks like a pretty good catch there, ref. But anyway, it uh, is a no catch. And Comfort will punt. Inslee at his 35 yard line to receive the kick. Comfort gets it away as a flag comes in way back here at 41. And that's where Inslee goes down. Now the field judge, with very, with nobody around him, throws the penalty. So this he must have be, seen someone leave early. Well, I'm interested to see this, Ralph, because I saw the same thing you did. Unless he counted too many men on the field somewhere. The officials are discussing it at the field. Giacchino is pointing us towards the towards the wolf pack side and it is personal foul face mask penalty against Nevada so well, something must have happened where uh, it was away from the football obviously and uh, one of the guys coming down on punt cover for Fresno State yeah, I was just going to say Ralph a lot of times uh, we have a personal foul on the receiving team it's a post scrimmage kick foul 15 yards from the spot of the end of the kick well, that's he was tackled at the 40, so it's a 20-yard penalty. And the officials are still trying to sort it out. But it'll be at the 20-yard line. I've seen a couple things that, uh, that I'm not sure about the explanation. But it's Nevada football. Neal. Great catch. Nine yard game. Kids, a uh, real gutty receiver. No quit. Either of these two. But again, I just don't think at this point you're gonna you're going to beat the Bulldogs with that with that tandem. They're they're gonna give Inslee this underneath. Bulldogs will give him this all day. Right there. That sort of stuff. 448 to go in the third quarter. You can see why he's the leading receiver in the nation. Reminds me of Steve Largent. You're right. Watch the Camino! Camino! He does go and get the football, and they go to him an awful lot. Fortunately, they're in danger. There's another one. They're in danger of dropping 0 4 while he pads his statistics. 
You know, he's averaging, what, 200 yards per game receiving and 15 catches, but now Inslee limps off the field. Well, they're going to the well. They're going to keep going to the well. You have that little trips out there. He slips past the defender into that zone. Smart, smart receiver, smart quarterback. And they're probably going to ride that horse uh, all the way to the end. Tinsley at 150 yards receiving in this one. With Inslee out of the game, they give it to Lemon on the ground. Anthony Limbrick on the stop, but a big game by Lemon, about nine-yard pickup. I mean, it's kind of scary when you look at the statistic, uh, the statistic with uh, Inslee. When he eight catches for 150 yards and being well short of your average. That's right, right. About half the normal catches. Here you see the handoff to Lemon. Looking for running room, turns it up for some tough yards. A gain of eight, so it's second and two. Inslee back in the game and back in the action. His ninth catch. Well, just trying. It's another first down. Just trying every single way to get it to him, Ralph. I mean, uh, now they throw a little, little quick screen out there from the uh, three uh, receiver setup. Just trying to give him different looks so the Bulldogs can't key on him. And uh, and use a, a particular defense to stop them, forcing the Bulldogs to play straight up defense. Gain of 14, first down at the 30 yard line. Just over three minutes remaining. Swing pass out to Lemon. The game to the late flag comes in there. Down to the sideline. Knocked out about the 25 yard line. Check the penalty. It's going to be holding against Nevada, so it's coming back. Attendance today, 21,115, and I would say that uh, that has to be very disappointing against a future WAC opponent and, and one of the favorites this year in the WAC. Also in attendance at this game, Lieutenant Governor Cruz Bustamante and Nevada Governor Kenny Quinn is also here. When I was Terry Allen, uh, as a sportscaster here a few years uh, a few years ago, more than a few years ago. <laughs> uh, Richard Bryan was lieutenant governor. He's now a U.S. senator. Holding on the offense, ten-yard penalty. Repeat, first down. I saw him upstairs in the press box in the hallway. Said hello. Did you uh, remember you? No. Nah. Big time. Inslee with the catch, picked up by Vernon Moss. Another big pickup. Well, you see Bulldog really screaming that he's being held out there. Alan Harper. Alan Harper really too much time to throw, and you kind of wonder with that much time to throw, hitting Inslee, that if there may not be a little holding going on out there, because suddenly at this stage the game be able to hold the Bulldogs after being pretty much stampeded until now. It's kind of wonderful. I'll make a prediction. He's just going to get his average. I'm not taking that bet. Lemon up the middle. It opens up for him. He knocked off his pins by Vernon Fox. The only thing that prevented a touchdown. But it'll be down at the one-yard line, maybe the two. And Nevada's in business. It'll be first and goal with 2.21 left in the third quarter in a 34-12 Fresno State lead. 13-yard game. Just a straight handoff man blocking to Lemon. Wolfpack know if they can score now, they're back in the ball game. At the two. Whistle for the play. Hey, Fresno State, that's their first time out of the half. Bulldogs have to take a timeout with 2.09 left. Well, I don't know if they had a little confusion. Well, they're going to try and sort it out. We'll step aside and take a break. Be back to Reno right after this. It's 34 12 Blue Dogs. Just in your picture on the right side of the screen. You should probably look for him. And he goes to him. Can't quite get it. He was open. Boy, that's huge. David Neal knows it. That's a huge, huge two points because now the Bulldogs have to, uh, the uh, Wolfpack, rather, have to score three times uh, conceivably here to, to take the lead in addition to holding the Bulldogs. So that's a big two points. 
Playing game at 16 points down as opposed to 14 is, is huge. You could get, I guess, two touchdowns and two two-point conversions to tie. Well, that's true. But those are tougher to get here. That's right. Here you go. He just has all the time. Has him wide open. And just, uh, just overthrew him. David has not been so far that sharp today. Still, he's uh, has a lot of yardage. He's a great quarterback. Will on off days, they're still great, and when they're on, they're just unstoppable. Well, he and Inslee just uh, they're locked in like radar. Oh my goodness! And we were talking to the coaches last night about it. you know that he's going to throw to Trevor. And he's I well, just try to take him out of the game. And they can try and they can do special things to double team him. But uh, they just still manage to make those hookups in the game. Why Phillips goes through the end zone for a touchdown. Well, the Bulldog offense now has a chance to assert itself here. And really put this ball game away. You see Nevada outgaining Fresno State more than two to one here in the second half. The touchdown by Lemon. Who would just as soon throw a block, they say, as carry the football. <laughs> it's that kind of a football coach's football player. Picks up about five. Well, what the Bulldogs are doing now, they know that they're going to have the uh, Wolfpack going to have that seven in the box and are just challenging it. Coming at it, running straight ahead north and south. They're outnumbered in there, but uh, they're banking on the skill of the running backs to pick their way through for some tough yards. They get for five on that one. The wind is uh, starting to pick up here. It's starting the game, it was about five miles an hour. It's really not much coming from the other direction. Now it's going pretty much left to right. So Fresno State going into the wind. And Nevada will be going into that wind in the fourth quarter. Harris Gaines putting his head down across the 25 to about the 27 yard line. And should set up a third down at about three as we approach one minute remaining here in the fourth, the third quarter. And Fresno State leading 34 18. Big down for the Bulldogs in a lot of respects. In this ball game, yes, but for them as a team to learn how to put away another team. And it's going to boil down to this, third down conversions in order to go from a good team to a great team. Bulldogs better than 50% on third down conversions. 8-3, pass is complete to Smith. He has the first down, cuts it back inside, and picks up about 10 more yards. Well, that's just how you do it, Ralph. Billy came out there nice and strong. Gets it to Charlie out there for a, for a uh, good game. But this is huge. This is a huge play uh, uh, for Bulldogs' confidence. On the play. Gets it out there where only he can get it. Turns it up. Because it's not just a regular third down conversion, Ralph. It's the third down conversion at this point in the ball game when you can put it away. 13 yards on the catch and run by Smith. First down for the Bulldogs. Final seconds here winding down. Derek Ward has a break open, oh, and they goodness. may not catch him again. What a day for Derek Ward. He will be caught by Carminer at the 10-yard line, but Derek Ward has uh, had an absolutely spectacular afternoon for Fresno State. Well, we saw the, the uh, forebearer of this last week at UCLA. The emergence, the birth, if you will, of a very special running back for Fresno State. You see him burst through. Great instincts and vision, speed, power, great attitude. What a freshman. Ward with a big game to close out the third quarter. The Bulldogs will have it at the 10-yard line when we come back to quarter number four after this. This isn't just another dairy farm. It's years of hard work and learning. This isn't CU homecoming next Saturday. It's also church day. Gather your friends and represent your fellowship. Experience the fun of Bulldog football with a big pregame picnic and receive a special game ticket package for your group. Call 244-2800 now for information. 
As we prepare to start the fourth quarter here, this is how Bulldogs end the third. Derek Ward just faints Maxwell Williams, number six, out of his shoes. <laughs> Carmina with the stop from behind. Bowling, looking to the end zone, looking to the tight end, and looking for the touchdown. He has it. Vince Brandstetter. And a, a nice, quick, and decisive drive for the Bulldogs. Oh, yeah, and a great play call by Andy Ludwig. They uh, rolled to the right, delayed with the tight end, back across the other side. Here you see Billy rolling, play action fake, rolling this way, good eye fake. A little delay by the tight end. He blocks down. The defense thinks he's a blocker. Great sell by Brandstetter to do so, and he just eases out into the flat. Gets lost in there. That's it. The Bulldogs will go for two. Again, it's Brandstetter, and it's good. The extra point, uh, the two point conversion. And the Bulldogs add to their lead. You know, Allen uh, had it, if it had not been for the kind of day Derek Ward is having. Billy Bullock will be player of the game. I think, I think Ward is stealing his thunder, but this has been an outstanding game for Bill Bullock as well. It's 42-18 Bulldogs still early in the fourth quarter. Today for Bullock. And he's just had a very efficient and effective game. And the kind of game that to, you expected from Bill Bullock when he entered his senior season. Well, we, we talked about that at the top of the show, Ralph. I picked up on this when we were sitting out in front of the hotel ready to, to wait for a car. When they emerged from the hotel to get on the bus, they were in single file, the entire team. And they had a walk. It was a walk with a purpose. It was a confident walk to that bus uh, that I hadn't seen to that level. Of me. And uh, they ca carried that over. They were ready to play today. Both sides of the ball. But well, they were also in single file because they didn't want to get in the way of those motorcycles. Inslee with the reception. There are folks back in, in the valley. There are, we are told, 35,000 motorcycles in Reno and 50,000 motorcycle aficionados, bikers. If you, if you would, this is the Harley Davidson uh, Street Vibrations Convention here. And uh, it is. Something I was telling Alan, I've never seen so much leather and tattoos in one place in my life. And, and motorcycles, I mean, they're fabulous, beautiful motorcycles. Pass complete to Mo Jones, and they are parked along the streets, two, sometimes three deep, running the entire length of a block. And Ralph, right by the hotel, and there's nothing better than falling asleep to the roar of a Harley engine. <laughs> I'm working out about two hours sleep, folks. Those engines went all night long until the, I was almost asleep, and the train came yeah, through. The, yeah, the super chief comes through about 3.30 in the morning, going right by the hotel. So, Lemon, no game. So my apologies for my uh, less than stellar performance today. If we sound a little punchy, there's a good reason for it. Yes. But I tell you, those uh, folks are really well behaved. You know, I've never seen so many... Bikers, are, as you said, in one place, and they, they were very well behaved and, and uh, good people. One of the reasons uh, Nevada's had a tough time running the ball for the play of Tim Skipper, and then one of the reasons the Bulldog defense has been so effective. Neal, right in the middle, off the hands of Burr, clearly picked off by Curtis Edwards. Edwards already has. Fresno State's only two interceptions this season. Looking for number three there. Well, now, if you're the uh, the Wolfpack and you're Coach Tisdale, what you want to do is forget about really trying to win this game. I'm not saying miracles can't happen, but you don't. that's not what you're going for. You're going to try to get some momentum ready. Get your offense back in sync. To involve people other than Inslee for the future. Uh, they're, they'll be 0-4 probably after this ball game. They got the Big West coming, coming up. Yeah, really dancing around out of trouble. The ball was dropped by him. Mm -hmm. It was knocked away by one of the Bulldogs on coverage. Terrence Brown, number 13, and Tyree Sams, number 4. Uh, a double coverage on Inslee. Well, here he is going again uh, to Inslee again. And I 
when he gets in trouble, the first thing he looks for is Ensley, and I, I don't blame him, I guess. Uh, that's his uh, game break there. And, but they have to involve more people in the offense, Ralph. Because uh, there's some tough teams in that big West. Looks like that was Sam's maybe got a hand on the ball or at least distracted Inslee enough. Punt by Norm Brady goes into the end zone. Brady went down and wanted a flag, but uh, no dice. Well, you saw City it. where they like to roll the dice. Yes, yes. Roll the dice. 13.42 remaining here. Timeout on the field. Fresno State will take over on offense again with a 42-18 lead. When we come back to I know that Pat Hill wants to have that place full of Bulldog Red. So if you possibly can get to the game, buy your tickets and go to Bulldog Stadium and Jim Sweeney Field. If you can't, we'll have it for you on Fox 26. Fresno State with the... Bill Bullock handing off to Josh Levi, a loss of about three. Blocking kind of broke down for Levi on that one. Ralph, you mentioned a good point there. In this game, even though the game is going to be televised, we are all the folks there to come out to the to the uh, to Jim Sweeney Field and, uh, and cheer them on. It's a whack opener, as you said. I think we're seeing the emergence of a very special team, not only competitive, but championship caliber. And if you come out, and we sell that thing out, we can bring you more games on TV. Ferris Gaines finds a big hole up the middle, cuts it back inside, and runs over the defender, Greg Oliver. And I'll tell you, this has been a rough day for the Nevada defense because some of those defensive backs especially have been uh, not only uh, fooled, but in, uh, you know punished on the runs by some of these big backs coming out of the back. Just north and south running there. The Paris Gaines. Uh, well, when... Emotion plays such an important part in football. And uh, winning is contagious, and good play is contagious emotionally. Unfortunately, so is losing. And uh, that seems to be what's crept into the Wolfpack psyche, if you will. Fresno State to 2-2 on the year and uh, win the first road game of this season. Of course, that was a tough three-game stretch for the Bulldogs, Oregon State, UCLA, and this one. Well, so far, the uh, the Bulldogs, it's getting a little little ragged out there, a little bit of jawing on the Wolfpack. You saw Carmener on that, that play. But so far, the Bulldogs have taken this revenge factor, laid on a pretty good beating, and uh, still keeping their class and winning with class. Well, Nevada has won the last two meetings in the 90s between these teams. And, of course, in 1994, it was a 62-35. The last year was 27-24. Four fourth quarter, or two fourth quarter touchdowns by Nevada pulled that game out. Bulldogs third and short here, Ralph. I don't expect them to put the ball in the air, although you never know. Uh, it's time now for that uh, smash mouth north and south type football. Bullock on the keeper has the first down. Run out of bounds by Oliver, but uh, we haven't seen that very often this year. Well, good safe play. Kind of the bootleg. And Andy Ludwig doing a great job of mixing this thing up and giving TCU a lot to think about. Short yardage, fake handoff. Really uses athletic ability to come outside and get the first down. Twelve yard pickup for Bullock. First down at the 40. 11.07 remaining. A lot of the fans really bailed out of here after Eric Ward's second big run. He got 10-yard line. Even more heading home now. This is the time of the game where you still want to keep playing hard. You want to execute your offense, one, to keep your momentum, but to two, to avoid injuries. You're less, you're less likely to get injured going full yeah, speed, yeah, yeah. then going half speed or three quarters. It was a three-yard gain setting up a second and seven, and a timeout is now called by, I believe, Nevada. Timeout, 
charge Nevada. That's her first charge. Rockwell had to leave the field, and uh, Nevada didn't get a guy out there to replace him. Rockwell shake it up in the last play. And Jeff Tisdell, his staff, have, uh, have a lot of work to do in what's going to be an 0-4 start for this team in, the, in a program that is not, not used to this kind of, of a struggling season. Bulldog fans, make sure to buy your Rainbow Fresno Straight Bulldog Buns when grocery shopping for all your barbecue and game day parties. A portion of all bun sales benefit the athletic department. Also have your buns at all home tailgate parties and watch for the Rainbow Bulldog Bun Patrol for prizes. Keep in the uh, Pat Hill spirit of the Valley's team. We'd like to say hello and invite all the folks out to the ball game next week from Exeter, Kingsburg, and Parlier. Hope you folks are enjoying the ball game. You see the remaining schedule, and uh, I would say favorable for Fresno State once you get back by, by the TCU and, and Colorado State games. TCU and Fresno State, top two picks in the WAC this year. Colorado State, a non conference game. And, Ralph, there's something about the TCU game. I, I've seen the, the look in Pat Hill's eyes. One, uh, here, see, you were taking the ball up there for a few yards. But he gets something in his eye when he talks about TCU. Now, it's not, I, I know he has absolute respect for the program and the coaches there, but he really wants to win. He wants to win every game. But this TCU is something uh, even, even extra special. Well, if you're talking about the two favorite teams, you know, right away, boom, first conference game of the year uh, is going to go a long way in determining who wins that conference. Right. loses that game is going to be playing catch up the rest of the season. Harris Gaines oh, cuts it inside touchdown. and he is gone. Touchdown, Fresno State, Harris Gaines. Well, a little draw play, a little quick draw, as they call it. And he popped it. We'll see the replay here in just a few seconds. A little quick draw. Boom shows pass. Hands it to Paris. Paris running north and south. I tell you, and he has a nose for the end zone. Now, when I heard the first scout reports on Paris games, I heard, well, he runs outside. That's where he likes to run. Has to learn to run north and south. I tell you, from the last three ball games I've seen Paris games, he has taken that philosophy, the north-south, and been very effective with it. And quite a showcase for the two running backs. Perhaps Paris Gaines has responded to what he has seen from Derek Ward in this game today. Well, it's contagious, Ralph. Like you said, it, it really is. I mean, winning is a habit. It's contagious. You pick everybody else up. So is losing. We're seeing two diametrically different things going on here uh, with the Wolfpack and Fresno State. Two teams going the opposite direction. Uh, there was a great block thrown on that uh, play by the center, Rodney Michael. As James Tillman and Paris Gaines celebrated, but Michael came over and picked up a guy, and that really allowed Gaines to spring free at the line of scrimmage, and, uh, and Gaines did the rest. You guys, uh, Ahmed Fadi, I know we, we said hello to you and uh, Joe Shy, and I know that uh, we're sitting home really happy for your Bulldogs. Uh, as well as eating your hearts out. But let me tell you, you had as much to do with this win as the players on the field. I'm sure they're going to come back to see you and bring you a game ball and, uh, and let you know that because you are definitely on their minds. You know that. And, uh, and you're going to get well and be back out here before you know it. You know, you, you look at the sideline and you see the emotion that has flowed from the Bulldogs this entire game. And I think that's indicative of just how critical this ball game was. It was an intense week of practice. Coach Hill uh, placed a tremendous amount of emphasis on this game and expected it to be a real dogfight with the Nevada team that they was expected to come out and respond to that terrible loss a week ago and try and get the first win of the year at homecoming. But I think you sense a sense of relief from some of these players and a sense of accomplishment and uh, all of the good things that uh, they've been expecting all year really have come together in this one football game. Maybe this this is the day that this team arrived for the 1999 season. You're, you're right, Ralph, and you said, uh, you know, it's a dogfight, and that's what uh, Coach Hill expected. And you know what? That's what it was. It's just the Bulldogs won the fight. 
Defensively, they came out and put the pressure on the quarterback uh, throughout the day. Uh, took away the run game in essence. Nimmin has scored a couple. But uh, offensively, they executed. I think Billy Bullock has stepped up to a new level, Ralph. I don't sense him being the same quarterback after today because you weather a lot of criticism as a quarterback. As I said, the buck stops here. But he has uh, he's just elevated. He has answered that uh, that call as a leader of this team. He can do a little quick out, trying to probably go for stats now. Boy, Inslee. Yeah. Probably going for a few stats, and that's all right. There you see Billy there. And uh, I tell you, they have hitched their fortunes to this young man. He's a quality young man. Uh, when you play quarterback, you're going to be controversial. you got to have thick skin. And he knows that. This is his team uh, to take uh, to a championship or not. And he takes it on willingly. So the C on the jersey. He is one of the captains. Pass is complete to Lucas. <laughs> Hit there by Terrence Brown. Bolick is a, is a captain. And, and, you know, he did everything that was asked of him today. He hit that big play when it was open. Exactly. And he did the little things. He completed the passes. And he had tremendous support by the offensive line. He had a, a great blocking and great running backs. And he made the adjustments, Ralph. I mean, with the balls, those three balls at UCLA did not have enough air in them. And the more air, the more room for error for the ball to, to be thrown. It gives more time for the uh, receiver to run it down. He made that adjustment. And you know what else, Ralph? I'm really impressed with Paris Gaines because Paris hyped as the man. Well, now he's in with the men. It is definitely an ensemble running group out there. And you see Paris, now a lesser person would get their dauber down, uh, not being the man. But yet you see him take the handoffs and go for a touchdown. He's still slashing there, going 100%. And uh, just a great team spirit that Pat Hill has been able to keep on this team of everybody working together. Nick Burley on the sack. And uh, Neil just had no chance on that one. Burley broke through and uh, smothered him. Lost seven. That'll set up a third down, 16, 840 remaining in the ballgame. Nearly came out, but Mo Jones picks up the first down. Well, this is what the Wolfpack are going to have to do. They're going to have to start involving more people in their offense other than Inslee. I think this was designed to go to Jones. You see him looking at him the whole way. Gets him the ball. I think that was designed specifically to throw to one receiver to start making this offense more versatile. Again, pressure on Neal. And he's dropped again. Dante Marsh, no gain. Tackle at the 34-yard line. Again, you see the Bulldogs. I'm really impressed. There's not a lot of jawing going on, jumping up and down and rubbing it in. They've exacted a very strong revenge on the Wolfpack here today, and they're delivering the beating with a lot of class. Picks up about two. Vernon Fox on the tackle. Devon Banks also in there along with Dante Marsh. Set up a third down and about eight for Nevada. Not, just, not much here. A little handoff here from Lemon. You see a host of Bulldogs. Great hit by Fox. Great pursuit by the Bulldogs. And this is the way you need to play defensively. Do not let up. Don't get anybody hurt. And you don't get somebody hurt by going 100%. Neil getting blitzed. Von Banks had a hand on him. Torresdale can't bring him down. Over the middle. Nathan Allen, the tight end with the completion. Another first down for Nevada as the drive continues. The clock continues to run under seven minutes now. It's 49-18, Fresno State leading this football game. Here you show Neil showing you his athletic ability, escaping outside, looking downfield. Again, involving another receiver besides Inslee. Picks up the first down. Lemon. Burley with the stop. 
a loss of three. Well, you wonder, you know, I know some folks at home saying, well, they're down by so much, and they're handing the ball off. Well, they, in all reality, they don't expect to win this ball game. Coach Tisdale knows that. He's trying to establish some momentum for next week, their Big West opener. He just wants to get a good-looking drive going. Get their sink back, involve other people, like I said. It's a, it's a, I've been there. It's, it, on the opposite end of this thing is a very lonesome feeling. But this is a good ball club. They just got to overcome some uh, uh, tremendous loss, I think, with their tight end. Kevin Coyle told us last night, Rob, he's, this was an exceptional talent, a tight end that ran like a flanker. And uh, to lose him is going to be an adjustment. Fresno State's going to call a timeout. Nick Burley, the player who made the tackle, was also injured on the play and uh, had to come off the field. Fresno State calls a timeout to talk it over and to get the right personnel out there defensively. It's 6-18. Fresno State on the way to evening and it's record at 2-2. Two two, 6-18 remaining here in the fourth quarter. Nevada with the football on second down and 12. Ralph Wood along with Alan Autry. And 35,000 motorcycle riders, or 50,000 motorcycle riders, I guess, are, are here for the convention. He's in the end zone, and there's contact. Penalty will be against. But again, Peyton not giving up anything. Nothing cheap here. No doubt about the interference. Tinsley goes to the corner. You didn't see the cut, but the corner route, and uh, Peyton. Uh, draped all over him, no doubt about that one. See, Peyton not playing the ball at all. He's <laughs> pretty much mauled him on that one. That was more like the uh, center. Pass interference on the defense. 15-yard penalty, first down. First and goal. The penalty takes it to the four, first and goal there. Peyton Williams, a senior, has yes, a Come out of this feeling okay. There was some concern about his hamstring, which had uh, given him some problems last game at UCLA, but uh, he's okay. <laughs> Neil will roll. He'll look for the end zone and may run it. The big 6 5. That's, it the end zone. That's another thing that, the, that he can do so well. He can run the football when he has to. Yeah, although you don't really want a uh, <laughs> valuable quarterback yeah, like that running around there. I don't know this time of the ball game. He, sometime discretion is a better part of valor, but worked out for him. But there was two bulldogs just bearing down on him. Now here's a guy who had a concussion last week, mind you. Decides to turn it up in the 49-18 ball game. Two bulldogs coming in there. Boom. Uh, I admire his his uh, courage. But uh, they don't have much depth behind them. Yeah, you don't want to go ahead first after that. He loses the football. Three points. As three Bulldogs apply the pressure. Number 99, Biddy Lockhart. Frank Battle, number 96. Number 48, Giacchino Chiramonte. And the version no good, so the score remains at 49-24. Fresno State still over six minutes remaining in this game. Once again, we want to encourage all the folks out there to come out to the stadium next week. Because, uh, like I said, we sell this thing out. We'll be able to bring more games to you, I'm sure. And uh, build up, uh, you know, the more you see these Bulldogs, the more you like them. You know, uh, like see them on TV, but we've got to sell the darn thing out to get close to it. Well, they made a lot of changes to the game and the game atmosphere, and there are so many other things going on aside from the football yeah, game. Right. And, and if you haven't been out, you might want to come out and give it a try for a weekend. Uh, a lot of ticket uh, packages available by calling 278 Dogs. But uh, many fans, the more fans that are there, more fun it is for the fans who are there. I mean, That's you right. know, there is a lot you don't, more. There's not a lot of fun. For instance, this stadium right now is empty. And there hasn't been any noise from the Nevada side except for that cannon for really much of the second half. But uh, Bulldog Stadium makes some noise. It's Billy Jack Pierce recovers the onside yeah. attempt. Yeah. And it's a fun, fun yeah. evening of football. Well, I like what Coach Tisdale's doing here because, again, he's yeah. forgetting about the score. He's telling his kids, don't worry about the score. Let's play this game as if it's a close ball game. 
We're going to onside kick. Try to get the ball back. Keep that momentum going that they had on offense. I like this. I like what he's doing. And a new quarterback. Right? Jeff Grady in the game for Fresno State. Hands off to Josh Levi. Game out two. It'll be second and eight. Levi getting some extended action. There's a Nevada player injured on the play. Well, like I said, this is. There's Grady, the freshman. Who, uh, who played so well that he really uh, supplanted the... There you see Smith there, and he looked like he might have got a little, what they call a stunner in the neck. You see, he has a neck pad on there already. Those things are real scary. They're scary injuries. Uh, most of the time, not that serious. There you see Billy, big game. He hadn't smiled much like that lately. Oh, you love to see that on the guys, don't you? It's just a great bunch of kids. Uh, and I, those of you who weren't at the Bulldog kickoff dinner, I, I uh, made a point that this is this group of kids, young men rather, you should observe them on the, the road like I do. Uh, they're just a good bunch of young men. Uh, they're very respectful to people. You see them opening doors for people. Um, it's a team that Fresno can really be proud of. And, uh, you know, come on out next Saturday because uh, it's a very special team here. They've yeah, taken their lumps up and down, Ralph, but it's uh, – there you see Smith. Josh Smith going to the locker room. He is done for the day. Jeff Brady, we mentioned at quarterback at Fresno State. I started to mention had really uh, – Outplayed Drew Johns, who came in as the second stringer behind Bola. Looks like Grady's going to be the guy. Levi makes a nice move and picks up the first down. And I know Jeff Grady being an ex-quarterback. He was in. All right, that's a good run. That's a good run. But, boy, let me throw the ball. Coach, let me put the ball in the air show you what I can do. He's going, please send in a pass. He might have got the green light there. Clock running at 4.40. It's all Fresno State, and, and the Bulldogs have, have been in front ever since opening with the first 20 points of the game in the first quarter. 20 to nothing. These two touchdowns ahead the rest of the way. Somewhere in the middle of that pile is Josh Levi. Picks up about three. Well, you know, last uh, last year, here's a chance now to see if the Bulldogs, meaning next week, can learn from last year. They had a big win against BYU, nationally ranked opponent, and then went to TCU, I believe, wasn't it? Well, TCU after the BYU game, but there was a letdown. I agree. Yeah, there was a letdown in the game and uh, and lost that game. Uh, now they have a big win and got to come home against TCU again. So hopefully, yeah, you're right. hopefully uh, you know, this is a new learning process. Is it going to be Scott? I have well, this was a young team. This was a young team. It was an even younger team a year ago, and they did have letdowns at a couple of points in the season, which perplexed everyone. But this is, you know, this is the learning process that Matt Hill and the coaches talk about. Now, here's the opportunity to learn almost an exact carbon copy of last year. Um, to go back now, to go back home and uh, place TCU, and you know that that's going to be one of his uh, his litanies throughout practice next week. That coach had this team ready to play today. Third down, Fresno State. Under three minutes remaining now. James Tillman tries to spin for his three yards, but he'll be well short of the first down. It'll be fourth and about four. All right, fans, SunMade, the world's favorite race, proudly brings you the player of the game. And I think it uh, <laughs> should be no surprise here. Derek Ward, wow. and I could safely say had a career day. He had 110 yards in his career before today. Well, he had 140, 176 today along with two touchdowns. He blocked a punt that resulted in another touchdown. So Derek Ward is our 
hands down, Sunmade player of the game. Brought to you by Sunmade, the world's favorite okay. racer. Well, Billy Volick was definitely in the hunt, and I'm sure Billy would gladly give it to Derek. Tillman had the football and may have had the first down, but he lost it. Fumbled the ball away, juggled it as he was spinning through traffic, and Bulldogs turned it over. They kept it on the ground, fourth down, didn't go for the field goal, didn't punt. But uh, Nevada gets the ball anyway with a minute 59 remaining in the football game. Watch as he gets into traffic, and uh, of course, Nevada's trying to strip it away, and it comes out right there, got it back, and then lost it again. Well, Ralph, in honor of a friend of mine, and for all those people over 45 out there, there's something I've always wanted to do. Uh oh, are you ready? Is Dandy Don in the room? <laughs> Turn out the lights. The party's over. All good things must end. Turn out the lights. The party's over. The Bulldogs are going to win. All right. You know <laughs> I promise, folks, the one and only. It's the thing I've always wanted to do ever since I was a kid. Well, that was a good play to do it because when Inslee drops a pass like that right in the breadbasket, you know the party is over. And that oh. one nearly picked off. Wow. Well, the sheets of fear had that one, and he knew it. He anticipated it, but he couldn't lock it up. Well, again, this is the way you want to end a ball game. Not on my singing. On the good defensive hard nose. Keep the, the momentum in there. Play. Don't lose anything for next week. All right. Play of the game. Brought to you by State Center Credit Union, home of the 6.9% auto loan. And while your singing was a close second, this is the play of the game. Derek Ward didn't find any room over the left side, so he broke it up the middle. And he really, Charles Rogers, number one, had an opportunity to get him, but couldn't bring him down. The 225-pound freshman on the way to his career, 176-yard day. And one of his two touchdowns, Derek Ward. You part of the play of the game, and play of the game brought to you by State Center Credit Union, home of the 6.9% auto loan. He reminds me of somebody, Derek, who, running the ball, Ralph. Who is it? I mean, well, the pro, is, it Earl Earl Cam is it Earl Campbell? Is it, is it Herschel Walker? What? That particular angle there reminded me of a lot of guys when I played ball. You know, I was that, just looking at him from to behind, <laughs> trying to catch him. <laughs> so it could have been. It's Pickle, huh? Pickle. Boy, a booming punt. Nate Williams feels it. Just to be better served by going to the turf, but he comes out somehow out of the pile. Three Nevada players collided with each other. And somehow Peyton Williams came out of there. Well, the Bulldogs are certainly finishing strong. Peyton Williams there, fighting off injuries all year. And uh, I think the Bulldogs, too, I always knew they were a tough outfit, Ralph, but. I think they've really explained a degree of toughness, which which reflects their coach. There you see Peyton squirming out of there some way. Comes out of there full of fire. And, but I think it exemplifies them. They take on the characteristics of their head coach, who is one tough hombre. And uh, the toughness on this team is, is to be admired. Well, there might be a tendency to, to kind of... Sigh, have a sigh of relief after a game like this because of all that went on during the week. But you can't do that in football because, you know, there's a bigger game next week. But I'll tell you one thing. When I heard about the injuries to the offensive line, I mean, my, my heart was sinking a little bit because I thought, oh, my goodness, what else can happen, you know? And, and, and if these guys can't play and the other guys have problems adjusting, I was worried about this game just from that standpoint. But uh, obviously there was no reason for concern because the guys who filled in stepped in without skipping a beat. We were told during practice this week they didn't change a thing, and they did come in without skipping a beat. And the, the performance today just it airs that out. Absolutely right, Rob. Well said. And a well-played game by Fresno State. Final seconds are ticking off. Bulldogs win this one. Fresno State evens its record at 2-2 two two with a 49-24 win here at Nevada. We'll be back to Reno after this.